Welcome to the um, Wednesday, July 12th, 2017 Select Board and Board of Health meeting here in the town of Deerfield um, Town Hall. First item on the agenda is minutes of May 10th and June 28th. Have you both had a chance to read I did. them? Yep. I make a motion to approve June 28th's meeting uh, minutes. I'll second the motion. Uh, if there's no further discussion, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. I make a motion to approve May 10th, 2017 meeting uh, minutes. I'll second it. <laughs> if there's no further discussion, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Um, select board comments. Uh, Trevor, did you want to talk about the yeah. rail, rail? I did. I, I, uh, we were invited up, and as with a lot of other board of health, up to Buckland um, last week. To uh, They had a discussion about railroad ties in their communities. We had a major fire in Northfield. We've had other fires around, and um, the railroad ties soaked and creased, so are stacking up all over the county, all over the state. All, all over the country um, found it in the town. and it's yeah. very hard to get uh, the railroad to offer any help so it was kind of a brainstorming session for people to kind of discuss um, the problem and, and make people aware of the issue and try to um, start dialogue on how to, how to you know how to tackle the problem because it is dangerous uh, when these things catch on fire they're usually stacked even all through Buckland Shelburne some here the railroad tracks are by the river a lot of places they yeah. stack these things up they catch fire they're hard to put out with water so sometimes they use foam thousands of gallons of foam it goes down into the river so it's really not it's not great it needs to get, they need to find an, a solution it's it's hard because there's not an easy solution or else they would do, do something with it but um, they need to start addressing it the problem is they're making thousands millions of these things every year you know there's some concrete there's some steel um, there's other materials, but really it's, it's wood and creosote soaked ties is really what, what railroads are using. Um, so there, there was a woman there from um, Toxic Action uh, Center and they, she spoke, uh, uh, Kelsey, I think she spoke a lot about, she was kind of just helping direct, they, they fund, a, uh, they do a lot of grassroots action to kind of get environmental things changed. So she had put, put out some good information kind of spearheaded the meeting of actions we could take by addressing our local legislators, coming up with a PR campaign, addressing, you know, going straight to the railroad to see what they can do to help. And um, so I think there's a multi-pronged kind of thing started to try and get, get moving to, to, help, to help address the problem. So it's, the issue is that even our local, um, you know, Stan Rosenberg or uh, Steve Kulik, there, there's not a lot they can do because it's regulated federally. So we have to talk to McGovern and others that are, you know, they we have should jurisdiction put on that list that. for um, the listening session. Yeah, well, I yep. I personally had some issues with the railroad, and I reached out to uh, Jim McGovern's office, and they were quite helpful. Oh yeah, uh, the railroad contacted me after many years of trying. Wow, and they they rectified my issues and stuff. But Very nice. I too have. Uh, an awful lot of railroad ties right near my house as oh, well. Oh, you do? They're stacked. And they there. did tell me that they were going to clean them up, but that was last year. So yep. they And we're afraid, you know, a lot of people are afraid they, they clean them up from somebody who's talking and drop right. them in another community sure. that they're not. And exactly. I mean, I think in Buckland there's over a thousand just right in the center of town right. uh, up by the trolley museum. So, you know, if something like that goes, it's just a disaster. I don't know how many were in Northfield, but... There were, you know, I guess that was a big fire and pretty toxic. So yeah. we're going to try and find some sort of solution. So. We, we have to have some kind of marking solution. Yeah. Because they do, they just move them around. Yeah. So. Well, the, I don't know if the state fire marshal or whoever investigated that, but the fire that was in Northfield was in the yard of the contractor who does the removal of these things for them. Uh huh. So. Yep. Kip, so did you have anything? We'll keep moving uh, on that. Um, I do. Okay. Do we have some time? Yeah. Um, sure. I think the first thing that I want to talk about is I think we should, in the near future, start having some discussions about hiring a town planner or someone. You know what? I don't want to cut you off, but yep. I think um, can we just bump that down to um, priorities and planning? Because um, I think that should be at the top of our list. 
Okay. So let's okay. talk about that because, um, and and how we can work it into the budget because I, I, I I'm agreeing with you. Okay. And especially um, if Dick cuts back on his hours, we don't have anyone. Right. That's even uh, like right. a contact person. In we. Okay. Hey. I mean, I know, Wendy, I know, but I meant... You don't want more work. Yeah. <laughs> this is the kind of thing that I really should be doing. Yeah. Once I have someone else in the office, I can... Okay, well, then let's, point, let's talk person. about yes. this because yeah, I... am happy to talk about it. Great. But I think part of the, the issue, and I don't want to take up a lot of time just yet, but uh, uh, part of the issue, I think, is also we need to get more board training. Well, mm -hmm. that, yep. that's where I was going with this, is that, yep. you know, over the last couple of months, I've sat in different uh, board meetings, uh, the planning board, which I'm a member of, and that uh, some businesses have come to town and really have been bounced around from board to board. And none of the boards seem to have any problem with just telling these people to come back. Um, I, I, I'd like to refer to Wendy's statement she said some time ago about staying in your own lane. These boards, I don't want to say they're out of control, but they sure don't know their boundaries. And when the people, the applicants, are trying to do the right thing, and they come to a board, and the board tells them to do one thing, and then they do it, then they go to a different board, and they go, oh, no, 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 we're the ones. It's like, what are these people supposed to do? They spend a lot of time and a lot of money, and we're not very, you know, friendly to them. And coordination. Yeah, and, and you know we, we talk about doing these um, studies about how to improve you know businesses in town and stuff like that. In the short time that I've been here, we've chased away you know businesses that would have generated close to sixty thousand dollars in revenue just by f foolish errors. And and I, I really want that to, to to stop. And I think part of you know you know looking for a planner or even a part-time person, I think that this board needs to call the, the chairs of the other three boards together and right away get a priority list and say, look, this is your lane, this is what you need to do, this is what you need to do. And so when they come to town hall, they were told, you know, and, and I'm not any, not particular order, you go to the Conservation Commission, you go to the Zoning Board of Appeals, and you go to the Planning Board last. And every one of these things, they don't have to have their hands held. Well, I can't make a decision until I know what these people are doing. Everybody has their own job to do. Do your job and let the other people do their job. Right. And the pieces will come together. But when that doesn't happen, the people on the other side, they don't know what to do. Yeah. And I've sat here and I've seen experienced lawyers shaking their head going, what, what are you guys doing? You know, And they don't want to be rude and they're not they don't want to come across as telling the local officials how to do their job but you can see that they're clearly frustrated because it's like this is the only place that they run into this you know now, I don't, I'm not saying they don't have other issues otherwise mm -hmm. but you know and, and I see this over and over so I think we need to take the lead and you know schedule a meeting and talk about some training and, and okay. talk about you know where our boundaries are yeah and and board training and board Oppor training opportunities. It's it's more than training, though, and uh, you yeah. know I hear what you're saying, and I've observed it as well. Yeah. So, um, uh, so let's let's put this down down here because I don't yep. want I don't want to um, lose this. Okay. Okay. All right, because that that is important part of what we want to mm -hmm. do. Yeah, okay. Um, the other thing I want to bring up um, was to do with a, a bill that the town received from Weston and Sampson uh, for. $4,000, uh, which was to uh, pay for a study, a feasibility study, to abandon the pump station at Captain Lathrop Drive. And um, I originally saw the bill, and I asked Pat not to pay that bill and to hold it. I contacted um, the people at Weston and Sampson, and I explained to them what my issue was, and they said they were going to get back to me. They never did, but last week, uh, they reached out to Kevin and was asking for this payment. And so I made sure that I got a hold of them again, and I had a discussion with Chris Wester about the work that they did. And the problem is they didn't do half of the work that they agreed to. And this comes from their proposal. And so in their memorandum that they sent to Kevin here, they said that they could not get accurate measurements 
because there was snow and ice along the streets and they couldn't get into the box culverts and things. So all the information that they got was given to them by Kevin. So what I said to this, to Wes and Sampson is, look, you didn't do half of your job. I don't feel that the town should pay you for it. So he didn't want to get into that discussion. He felt they did the job, they want their money. So I had the discussion with Kevin, and we went to Brenda, and Brenda explained to me that it's the department's head decision on whether or not a bill gets paid. Kevin then said he wants to pay the bill. But Brenda further went on to explain to me that it was our decision before we signed the warrant that we can change the warrant to adjust that bill any way that we see fit. Um, so if you want any more detail, I can sure get into it. But I, they didn't do any more than half of the work, and I don't feel that we should pay them more than half of that bill. Well, um, we do, you know, from, from what I understand, there's a little bit of um, pushback from Kevin on how much they've done. Sure. And so um, he had said that he had talked with Weston Sampson and that he had got them to drop the bill 500 bucks or something like that because he felt like they had they had hit I don't know four or not obviously they couldn't do all of it because you're right it wasn't feasible so they didn't they didn't go on further to the charge but um, he was able to push it down and then he also said that they weren't be, weren't able to get into the catch basins but they were able to get in the sewer manhole so he felt you know he thought a fair price was 3500 bucks but Okay. Uh, you know, again, well, I'm not that deep sure. into it, so. Let me explain kind of to you that what they were supposed to do is they were supposed to come out and field verify all these measurements, which they did not do. They were provided to them through Kevin. And it says that in their words. It's, it's not a he said, she said. In the memorandum from Weston Sampson said that uh, within the project area and determined the existing elevations and sanitary sewers at the Main Street Sewer Man Hole Cover 305A and 330A, see attached figures. All yeah. elevations are based on previously known local assessed uh, datum. The depth of the sewer flow line at Manhole Cover 305A was provided by the town. So Weston and Sampson themselves, these their words, said they didn't do it. They got the information from Kevin. Now, we rely on these people as professionals. Having these numbers in their hand, they should be able to look at it and say, all right, this one is at elevation 100. This one's at elevation 98. We have too large of a distance to go. We do not have enough pitch. It can't be done. That's where it should have stopped, mm -hmm. but it didn't. They continued on, and they did do a drawing of what is existing. Sure, you can see that. But what they did not do is they did not prepare conceptual design for the replacement of the sewer because it's just not feasible. Right. They also did not prepare a preliminary um, opinion of the probable construction cost, which also would have been a detailed thing. So what they did do is they sent a crew out here to look around, they gathered information from Kevin, created that, and it was less than half of what they said they were going to do. So my question is we, we pay some figure of this, sure. and we have to go pay it again. Um, if, we are, if we are held to account to pay this, do we have to have a special town meeting to come up with this? Well, I don't know where it goes legally from here. Maybe I could get some guidance from. I believe we would have to have a special town meeting if we don't do it tonight. Because you only have, uh, legally have to pay by the 15th of July. Have I all believe. the bills paid for, yeah. for the fiscal for, year. For the fiscal year. Otherwise, it would be a special town meeting. Isn't that correct? I or old bills, but uh, I think there's a third, a third or fourth way. Where are we going to say it? I, I was going to say, I find it hard to believe that this community should pay a bill just because, you know, we might have to, you know, deal with the balance of it in another manner. I mean, I, that's... Well, as long as it does, I mean, as long as we're having a special town meeting, it's not a big deal, but to, to have a, you know, it costs money to have a special town yeah. meeting, so to pay I mean, bill. if we're, 
Well, talking if about five hundred. Have one anyways. If we're talking about five or six hundred bucks, one way or the other, um, and then you pay twenty five hundred dollars to have a special town meeting to pay the bill, it's kind of. A oh, yeah. What's the date on the bill? I have the I have the scope yeah. of work and I have the um, August. The it's August twenty third, two thousand sixteen, as the original. No, that's no, the, um, that's the scope, and then there's the results the bill, and the bill. The invoices. Are the bill and oh, invoices. there it is. Yeah. That's on uh, January two thousand seventeen. Okay, so what happened in, at that point? I was not really here at that point. So no, December 23rd, 16 is a feasibility study. Right, but the bill thing. itself. Summary. When the bill came, yes. it was I, we had a discussion about it at the sewer study committee. Okay. And, you know, we read this and said, well, they didn't do half of, they didn't do half of what they were supposed to do. So I looked at the bill, and I think I first approached Pat about it, and I told her, I said, just hold on to this, and I would contact That's when it Chris started. Weston. Okay. That's or when it started. I. I yeah. I contacted him and he said look into it and never go back to me you know so and, sat for, and it sat all that time until everybody and to get he never bill. called me he back he it. called Kevin looking for the money you know and so I said to him I said well why didn't you get back to me and then he just said well you know I feel that we did the work that we were supposed to do are we ever planning to use Weston and Samson again I don't know I got some more info I wanted but that's another topic I just My understanding was that Kevin felt that four of the five things were done, but you're saying not five, four of the five things were done. Well, the very first thing is to perform field measurements along North Main Street and Catherine Blatham to determine the elevations of the existing. Whether or not they actually did that, I do not know. Their letter here says they did not. But I did ask Kevin the other day, and he said, yes, they did, because yeah. he opened them. They couldn't get in, in the well, catch you know basins, what? but they could get in the manholes, he said. You know, there's a rotten fish here. Because why would the engineer, if I was a contract, if I was the engineer, and I physically did that work, I would not write these words saying I couldn't get into them. So, okay, that's the first thing. And, and then you go on. It says they didn't, they didn't do the plans because they didn't provide them. They didn't do the cost to do it because it's not feasible. So how could you say they did four of the five? You know, what they did do is they sent us a, a they summarized their findings in a brief technical um, memorandum, which is this. It takes up a half a page. Do you think it's worth $2,000? I don't know. Is there any other um, avenue for, Wendy, is there any other avenue for addressing well, we were the bill later on? Well, I was looking on? at the contract, but I think the contract that I was looking at was simply, was the Headwaters one for, yeah, that's, for that's some different. resolving. Yeah. I don't, I don't, I have not seen the actual, if there was a written contract, there should have been, if that, you know, and would have term we would have had that term if I had done the contract because right. I would have had legal look at it and we would have had right. our standard contract, which would allow for a, um, dispute resolution. a dispute resolution with triple, you know, with the arbitration association to sure. resolve this kind of issue. So, um, well, well, but we have to, it's an internal we issue as well it, because we're it's, yeah. we're divided here within the town about. If we hold it to two more weeks, is it? Uh, yeah, we're, we've got to get it on the. Okay, what if we sign the warrant? Uh, well, Trevor and I could sign it. You don't have to sign it. But, but it, then it, it, no, no, that's no, no, not. No, 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 it's no, not a just, matter of signing it. It's a matter of right and wrong. How? Yep. All I'm saying. Wait. Let me finish. We could sign it tonight so it's officially signed, but then hold it until this gets resolved by the end of the week between, um, I mean, because what Kevin told me is different than what Kip is telling yeah, me. And he's away, Kevin's and he, away. And Kevin's he's away. Scotia so training this week, yeah. If we could hold it, so it's signed, but we'd just not send out the bill until it's resolved, and Wendy, you could resolve it with between Kip and Kevin. Well, I think, I think the, because this is what, not what, what I'm, I mean, this is different than what I was told. Right. Kevin's of the opinion to pay it, pay $3,500. And when I ask him, where's this and where's this, he says, I don't know. So I, I question myself, why do you think we should pay it? And his response to me was, because that's what municipalities do. And I'm like, holy, 
I like you, you, it's, you pay him because well, you, could, he, you can't I, find a solution. I think we had a little more of a substantive response from him than that, but um, yes. no. I, I, I'd be happy yeah. to see what I can do. I mean, I, I keep, it's totally legitimate. So I, but that's not the story I had. So I would rather. I I understand that we have to sign it by the. I mean, a decision has to be made by the end of the week. But if if we sign it. I, I wouldn't. I would want it to be held until this is resolved. Because, yeah, we can hold the check. Yeah, I wouldn't want it sent out. And then if it isn't satisfactorily resolved, and and uh, you know, I would want the check not to be sent. Yeah. I guess is what I would say. Because we can hold the check. Yeah. So that that sort of because does well, both things. It, it goes through a warrant, I, I, but it's, you're, it's held you're, What you're saying is, I mean, I'm, I'm, you know, mm -hmm. you have valid um, summary of this, and but that's not what I was told. So um, I just want to make sure, I, I don't want to hold up payment that's, that is, that Kevin worked on, reduced, got reduced for what he felt the work was why, done. Why and Why do you think a, um, this firm, which I think has had a lot of history with our town, would be fighting over f two grand. I mean, how, I mean, how many? Well, uh, we we interviewed. This is a year, goes back fifteen years or more. We interviewed many engineering firms, and we picked Weston Sampson based on the engineer that we interviewed, which was Dan Lawrence, and we yeah. had. A wonderful relationship with Dan Lawrence for many for many years, years. and okay. he would do work ahead and of time and wait until we got grants like the River Road. I mean, he did that work. Yeah, almost two years before we got awarded um, Mass Works award, and then he got obviously got reimbursed. But Dan, does, Dan like a went a relationship. right, and well, well Dan, town, uh, town wouldn't, I can't imagine they would want to. Well, they never replace. The they we never replace someone like Dan. They we get rotating persons. So we don't now. have a good solid person to no. work with through there. Mm -hmm. I mean, I can't imagine a company like that would want to jeopardize with all the work we have to do in town over two thousand dollars. I mean, I, if I were a well, businessman, I would say, look, you're right. Only half of the bill. I've only times done half have of changed. It. Let's catch up next time. I mean, bill somebody extra next bill. I mean. It just seems crazy why they're holding their foot down so hard on this four grand. It doesn't right. make any sense. Well, like I said, when I spoke with him, he offered $3,500, and I, I, I told him I, I didn't think that was fair. I but, said, you didn't come. What do you think is fair? I think $2,000 is. So we should you know, It's not a, a lot of money, but it's like, why pay them for something they didn't you. do? You know, so. I, I agree. And, and I, you know, with other stuff I'm not disagreeing done. either, okay. Kip. So I, it's just that that's not the story I had. Let's so. we'll sign the warrant, get it through, and then we'll figure out how to deal this before the end of the week and um, either yeah. not send it or send it. Because yeah. I hate yeah. to come back for a special town meeting to pay $15. Well, I, I don't know. I'm not really that up on how Me the neither. process works. But, but that's what I'm I mean, hearing. There it's seems like, to be some, I, in finance committee meetings, I'm always hearing these uh, reserve fund you know, is, adjustments. I mean, there seems like, you know, with like our budget, that if year. we needed $2,000 to pay a bill. This is the deadline. Bill, this is the deadline. Though. Right. Well, the reserve fund has right, to be un, uh, unforeseen. Okay. It can't yeah, be part. something. And, so. and this is, everything has to be done this right. week. But I, I agree. It seems okay. crazy. Yeah. Because most of the time, at any other right. time of the year, you can do that. Think yeah, I mean, push obviously, off, but push off for another couple weeks. Well, we can hold, hold on mailing it. Yeah, and, I think um, that's But I, I would hold on, on to it. Solid yeah. answer Because it doesn't have to be um, mailed out till the end of the week. So I would hold on to it and try to get this resolved. And and you can sort yep. out. I would like to I'll work, work on this. It's interesting to find out why they're holding their foot down so hard yeah. on such a small well, bill. Well, Especially when you don't you feel a, like you have other stuff to discuss. Yeah, I have other stuff. Okay. Shoot. Yeah. Uh, helpful. Then I, 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 yes. Or they could send a separate. Well, bill. that was coming out of that fund, really anyways. Hold a special town meeting to pay the difference of fifteen hundred dollars. 
No, this is an old bill. It's an old bill. This is an old bill, Dick. Dick, this is. It's an old bill. It's an old bill. It has to be paid from last year's. I mean, fiscal. That June ends June. You have two more I think, weeks. I think what I hear what you're saying that we pay can, part of it. For yeah. Now. And then maybe they could send a then, separate bill. <laughs> they can adjust their bill. Well, I think. I think that's a secondary issue. I think we have to resolve what's what's owed and what's due and what we can negotiate. I would rather resolve whether the work was done. Kevin thinks the work was done. Kip does not think. And so I, I would like the stories to be. Well, can I ask well, a clarifying question? Uh, my, my did thing, they come to? Um, did they come before no. the sewer committee? No. They haven't. No. Okay. And okay. the thing is, it, where I have a problem with this two stories is that even if you don't take what I'm saying. Read their own words. They were admitting in their paperwork they didn't do it. Yeah. They're saying, I got this information from Kevin. I didn't do this. But I did not I'm provide saying, you with. The check. That's why I'm saying hold on to the check and try to okay. sort this out because this needs to be sorted out. Okay. I, I'm 100%. I'm okay. I want to pay bills that we don't have to pay. So give that to Wendy. Yeah. Well, the question, okay. I'll talk with you later. <laughs> I have this. That's for you. The, n the next issue that I wanted to bring up with Weston and Sampson is uh, a little more than a year ago, um, we hired them to do a, a study on what was wrong with our sewage treatment plants. And um, shortly after I became a selectman, I was presented with this enormous plan and this big building that wasn't, was to be built on property that the town doesn't even own. And it took me a, a lot of time and a lot of investigations. I traveled all over places trying to figure out and I finally came to, not to the head of the problem, but somewhere along the line, Weston and Samson developed a sewage treatment plant five times larger than what we needed. They developed the sewage treatment plant to be a regional sewage treatment plant. And I'm trying to figure out where they got this authorization from. Because I've looked through the files, I know Wendy's looked through her files, nowhere can I find where they did this. So I'm trying to, I had a conversation with the same man about this issue, that we hired them as professionals. Why on earth would they take our two plants that combined cannot handle more than one and a half million gallons and build us a plant for eight million gallons a day? You know, how, no you know, and, and that's why it was so enormously expensive. Mm. So. At first, he said that they would redo the plans and downscale it for nothing. That's great. But then they said, well, now we have to do all the hydraulic calculations all over again, so it's going to be another $130,000. And I said, wait a minute. Something's you know. going on with yeah, the plant there. Yeah, I know. So I, I said to him, I said, you, you need to provide to me authorization to do that. Otherwise, I'm going to expect you to do what you were originally contracted to do. He told me that he had a contract with the town, so he sent me a copy of it. And it was extremely vague, and it's just they were going to do service. It had nothing to do with what, what, what it was. It wasn't and real scope of work. It wasn't. Either. And so, you know, so now I'm waiting to hear back from them to find out what they've got to say about that. But that's, well, that I, is even a bigger issue. It is a bigger I, issue. And I would not support that. Well, I, I know. I, I, I don't I want to do like, that. No. But part of, part of what came back from the last sewer study committee meeting is they wanted to hire somebody to, to do this, and I'm like, wait a minute, wait, you know, this is what Weston and Samson was supposed to do, and they charged us all of this money, and we went through, the sewer study committee went through most of this, and we determined that, you know, it's just overkill, you know, it's all the pipe size, everything that they did was just, you know, so much larger. One of the things that they did is they designed a plant, a small plant in southern Connecticut that I went there and I spoke with the man, and he told me all the problems that it had. So I asked Weston Sampson to meet with me, and they did, and Kevin, and I confronted them saying, look at this plant that you did down there, it was really bad. You know, they didn't like any of it. And that was only a million dollar plant. And he said, well, he was really surprised and he was gonna to talk to the guy. And that plant down there was not even 20% of the size that they designed for us. Was it a problem down there? It was too big for them, or was it too small? No, it just didn't work properly. Oh. You know, it's it was all you know. It was just well, just didn't work. 
I would, I mean, Kip, we don't have to go with Weston Sims. It's no, not I, choice. I, I, I know, but I, I, I would it, not it bothers me that we spent this kind of money, and, and I want to get to the, I, I think what I basically said to the guy is, like, I want them to redo this for nothing, or I want a refund. I said, because you, you just, you know, you took advantage of the town. You know, we relied on you as professionals, mm -hmm. and you really took advantage of the town. So, all right. I'm done. That's what happens when you get rotating engineers. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I, seriously, I mean, I, I, I don't buy that. I, I think that these people just took advantage of the community. Uh, now, whether I have my own feelings as how this all could have come about, but I don't, I can't say for sure. But um, they they had ideas. They had conversations with people who probably weren't authorized, and and they just ran with this. Uh, they saw. Uh, they get paid by the percentage of the final cost. So the more it costs, the more they get paid. And, and that's what we got. So the bottom line is that we, we have plans that we can't use. Right. And that it's has permitted. a big, and I also found out, that has a big reason why when we applied for that Mass Works grant, that they said no. They said no. It's like, what are, you, what are you talking about? You guys use, you know, half a million gallons a day and you want to build an eight million gallon day plant what no yeah but don't you think that that would have why did they do that because I if, explained to you I mean whether you want the to whole, a whole deal was that we were supposed to get the mass works I understand grant. so it, why would it, they it, it, make it, a competitive us not competitive it's, it's not it's not the exact same thing but yet it's the exact same thing just like the school roof these people get paid by what the final cost is so the more they can make it cost the more they're gonna make well and you, you, Need Again, to be, you know. I know, okay. I know, and I also so but we think we it's also really share responsibility because there should be yeah. in the files something that gave outlining out. the scope of work, the size, whether it's going to be regional, whether we're going to bind the two I plants know. within town, all of that. And I hate when I hear people say I've heard, but I've heard yeah. <laughs> that they ran with that kind of in, you know input they were getting from various town officials. And um, again, I can't, I don't have something on paper showing what their scope is because engineering services are no longer required to be unless they're part of a related design service with a construction project required to be bid out you can you don't whoever. have that kind of careful construction right. of the bid mm -hmm. documents where you but you should you need to have a scope of services yeah so but where how did we direct them and that but, is the question but well uh, but see what i think this is what happened do? i mean dan left and and we had no relationship with. Yeah, but it, but we it, had something, and and who I know, who but asked them to do this. But all professionals I mean, have a certain right, amount of ethical right. obligation. They know, we, they know more and, than we do. We yeah. rely on them for that it, advice and guidance. You go in for an operation, get your kidney stone, and the guy says, "Well, your heart didn't look so good, so we replace that too." While we, you know, it's like <laughs> that does happen. That okay. does happen, <laughs> Kip. All right. Well, well, not a good example. <laughs> this is frightening me. <laughs> now, listen, I'm really so, sorry. I We're running way late. This. this is serious. So, so we'll, yeah, um, okay. follow up with this. Okay. Uh, let's take care of our um, building inspector right now, so we don't keep him out late. Dick, can you building come up? Building commissioner. I mean, building commissioner. Yes. <laughs> sorry, Dick. Come up, please. Um, we have you um, want to discuss your retirement plans with us. <laughs> and that's and what I want to make clear that you are reducing your hours. January 5th of 2018, I am going to reduce my number of hours work for the town of Deerfield to less than 20 by resigning as the building commissioner. Okay? okay. I will continue as the Board of Health agent, unless you want to get rid of me for there. But it's my intention to reduce my hours. Okay. I think okay. I've uh, earned it. I, I think I'm beyond. <laughs> uh, I don't know. I, I want you to stick around. <laughs> well, I'm not looking for a third round, so. Uh, okay. So that's my plan. And part of that plan, the reason I'm here early and not just giving you 30 days notice, is I think you really need to hire a transitional building commissioner to yep. transition the move with me before the first of the year so that he becomes, he or she becomes familiar with zoning and the background of things that are happening in town right now. Agreed. We have several large projects 
and several things going on that need to be handled. And it'll also do uh, some zoning planning crossover to help because we do have some things that need to be taken care of. Right. Okay. Your turn, Wendy. Well, I thought you were going to make a recommendation. Oh, <laughs> well, yeah. I thought that was your part. I can do whatever you ask. Would you like well, me to? Well, okay. my recommendation is to increase the hours of the present part-time building inspector I have to full-time, and then January 1st, he would automatically take over to be the building commissioner. It would be a transitional period. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That makes sense. Do you have any issues with that? No, I think it's a great idea. I, I mean, it's a great idea, um, too. Being a building inspector requires, you know, a certain amount of education and, and a lot of experience, yeah. uh, but also dealing with uh, Deerfield's unique zoning and all the issues we have in town. I've been here 40 something years and I still don't understand them all. So yeah, it, it's going to take somebody new a while to learn all the ins and outs. And as Dick mentioned that we do have a lot of big projects here in town, in the center of town, but also at the academy. and. We have the new EMS building online, so there's a lot of important things that the town really needs to keep their uh, fingers on. So well, that that's the whole issue of me yeah. telling you ahead of time, right? Because the donation of the Deerfield Academy donating the building to us is right. There's going to be a lot of work involved in that to make sure, sure. that that happens yes. quickly. I'm hoping that that starts construction uh, sometime the first of August, and I'm hoping it gets completed by the first of January. Uh, nice. That's the goal. I don't know if Good. I've informed you before, but no. uh, mm -hmm. that that is the goal. There's the construction great. at the present building at Deerfield Academy, at the big one, is will take another year. They are just starting construction on a maintenance building. Then they're going to do the tear down the old maintenance building and turn it into a health center. So there's. Other pro and we have other projects that you're aware of that people are interested in sure. coming into town. Yep. And I'm glad to hear that you've mentioned to get a planner. Yeah. We absolutely, Must. from my standpoint, from what I've seen the past year for people making inquiries, they usually stop first at the building inspection office to inquire about zoning, building issues, and things like that. And a, a planner would have all that stuff at their fingertips. I, I agree. And I think that planner's job should also be economic development to exactly. entice yes. people yep. into town. Yep. So yep. I'm going on a little speech, Wendy. That's, so. That's fine. Good. <laughs> okay. I just, but this people need to be aware, and I'll make it's this a, it's statement. A, it's a cost. It costs us. We, we only have one building that's been built that's new construction, to my knowledge. Eliminate the highway department and that kind of thing. We had the animal hospital is the only new business, new building that's moved into town in over 15 years, maybe 20 years. So it's about time we stepped up to the plate because we've lost yes. businesses. We've lost Deerfield Plastics, okay. Deerfield Urethane. We need to recoup. Yes, we do. So into okay. my speech. Sounds good. I am 100% so, supportive. Well, I'd like yeah. the board when do your turn? Put that on the list of priorities. I wrote it down. I think you covered it all. I don't think there's more. Well, the plan is for as soon as possible to, um, if it sounds like you're in agreement, um, to have our assistant building commissioner, actually. I thought mm -hmm. he was an agent, but he's commissioner. I, I'd um, like that to happen the 1st of August. Okay. To, I, I don't want to hold this up for it really, really well, needs to be. Well, then I would make a motion that um, we support this transition position um, effective August 1st. Second. All those in favor? Uh, no. Are you I, I'm, 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 I'm,
It's great. You were just Thank awfully you. quiet, Thank you. so it made me no, nervous. I, I, no, I'm very excited. Thank I, I think Thank it's you. a great idea. It really okay. is. So. Yep. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Janamine, I'm sorry that you um, had... Um, Local government inaction. Yes. Yeah. Fine. Did you say inaction or in action? <laughs> I'm going to let you decide. Okay. It's um, you, you probably should introduce yourself. Yes. And I... Um, Well, we thank you for coming. I know you represent many towns. Um, so I'm Jan I mean, I'm the executive director of the Franklin County Solid Waste Management District. Um, I like to call it the district for short. Thank you, M.A. Um, M.A. is your um, outstanding and our outstanding representative. And, and thank you, M.A., for going. And she's also the district's treasurer, so she's oh, stepped up to assist us with paying our bills and nice. doing that. Um, so, you know, considering your, the timing um, where you are, I kind of want to spend as much time as you'd like um, and as little time as is practical um, going over some of the work that the Solid Waste District provides to the town. And um, the whole um, idea for coming before the board came because the situation coal rain arose and I had to go to a select board meeting and they had no idea who I was and you know they're kind of like well, we don't even know what you do and I realized oh that's because I work directly with Kevin Fox um, the town administrator and I work directly with the highway superintendent Scott Sullivan and we all work really closely together all the time and so I never have a reason to go to the select board so um, that scenario is very similar to my relationship with the town of Deerfield staff where I work with Wendy and Pat, um, and I also work very closely with Kevin and um, Keith at the treatment plant. Um, and at the transfer station, you know, I show up there occasionally and, and uh, talk to the attendants there. So um, I felt it was important for you to see the one, one of the three faces of the Solid Waste District yes. and to just briefly, so, so the one page or double-sided sheet is you know, a list that I update annually. This is um, some of the programs and services that we provide. And to give you a very macro overview, the district has really two levels of um, services. One is the administrative assessment-based services. So every town pays an assessment, and, you know, you get, we file reports for you, we file grants, we submit grants, for you, we operate regional hazardous waste programs, we give out sharps containers, um, and, and Lisa White is great about yeah. um, being one of our sites for that. Um, we sell compost bins, you know, we do all these things that you get for your assessment. We work in the schools. The, the reverse side, um, and I'm just gonna go kind of quickly through this, so if yeah. something, if you see a Actually, see I just something, had one question. Um, sure, yeah, you can. Um, on the pellet bags, um, are you still recycling those? Mm -hmm. And then the, the plastic that's on the hay? The hay bales, hay, yes. Hay, um, yes. Are you still able to recycle yes, those? Yes, absolutely. Perfect. I personally handle every touch, every single piece of that plastic. <laughs> um, Thank you. Um, yes, I, I you're welcome. really and wanted to make sure that we had... That's, we were still doing that because that, that stuff is pretty. Yes, it's actually oh, here num it is. number six. Yeah. It's, it's oh, at the very bottom. It's on the but let me let me just go quickly oh. through these and we'll talk more a little bit more about pellet bags. Okay. Okay. Uh, if if you want. Um, so uh, our overhead is paid. Sixty five percent of our overhead is paid through assessments. So the other thirty five percent is raised through grants and through fee for service programs. And <clears throat> we've been pretty successful or very successful at keeping a balanced budget or actually making a little bit of um, uh, surplus each year. The fee-for-service, the most common items, and Deerfield actually uses all of these except one, one uh, inspection. So um, we provide contracts. I got to bid and have been doing this for 15 years, uh, 17 years, um, for hauling contracts for transfer stations. So 
the town's recycling, trash, bulky items, scrap metal, um, those all are managed through my office. The, um, we also help the town with um, fluorescent light bulbs, um, if you have any tires that show up, any special wastes that happen to come into the transfer station, um, propane tanks, any you know um, items that come through. We, we don't have official contracts for those items, but we have either state vendors or vendors that we've vetted. Um, and so we, you know, all the transfer station attendant has to do is call and say, oh, my fluorescent light boxes are full, and we'll call Veolia and have that pick up. Um, we consider that a fee for service because after doing it f at no charge for many, many years, um, I decided to add a whopping $5 to cover as a token the time that it takes both the program director and the bookkeeper to coordinate that. Um, the other service, pretty, pretty large service that the town uses, fee-for-service service, fee for service, service program, is the sludge hauling and disposal. You were just talking about the treatment plant. So right. the, the sludge, here you're about to sign the, the MOU. Yeah. The, um, the sludge from both Old Deerfield and South Deerfield has been running through our contract for many, many years. Um, and that, you know, there's, there's an administrative fee for, for um, all of these services. Household hazardous waste you folks participate in. Um, now, number five, I've conducted the transfer station inspection. Um, I'm the only municipal licensed third-party transfer station inspection person, inspector, um, around. So <clears throat> I do all of the um, Franklin County transfer stations and Hilltown Resource Management ones in the North Berkshire um, transfer stations inspections. So we make some money doing, uh, doing those other districts. The town, and I hate to say that maybe it's Weston and Sampson, um, has another, another company do their landfill inspection, which is every two years. And this is different. There's different types of inspection. So I won't go into a lot of detail, but the state had. Uh, what did we switch? We, I thought we switched that this year. Well, what did we ask you to do this year instead? That was different. I thought you, you were, we asked you to do it. We, well, you, 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 two, That's two years ago, contract. two years ago, you signed an MOU for me to do the landfill inspection, but right. then I found out that whoever your consultant engineer is who does the monitoring, monitoring right. did the third-party inspection. Right, and I thought uh, we already agreed, Kevin and I talked, and we agreed that, okay, well, fine, and we took it off the Weston and Sampson. Okay, well, I don't, I didn't, wasn't cognizant, I didn't remember. Okay, yeah. And I haven't done the MOUs for that. That's okay. usually a fall, a fall thing. That's tomorrow. You'll get Tomorrow. that too. Okay. Yeah, right. yeah, no, we, we talked about it. We thought that no, was great. No, we, um, okay. on purpose, I think, switched to you. Okay. I mean, yeah, because I'm a whole lot cheaper than <laughs> Weston and Samson. But, um, yeah, uh, uh, Kevin called okay. Weston and Samson. So we found out we what should, they were charging. You know, and we, my, my pen. You could keep it. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, yeah the, the challenge there is just to make sure that they know what, what part of the third-party inspection I'm doing. That they okay. still have to do okay. the we'll monitoring and the well testing okay. and the, the... They are doing the well testing. Air yeah. quality, whatever, you yeah. know, the, the vent testing. We'll close that loop with Kevin and me and you and okay. Pat or whoever. So, uh, and then um, quickly, the pellet bag program um, a few years ago, so I think it was 2013. Uh, in 2013 and 14, I get two grants, one from DEP, and there used to be a um, community innovation grant that does no longer exist. So it's about eighty one thousand dollars to um, purchase the trailer. So there's a trailer at the Deerfield Transfer Station for bale wrap um, and greenhouse film and then the all of the sheds. So um, we literally pick up we have about ten transfer stations that collect pellet bags um, and then uh, those are all consolidated in Greenfield and we bale those. And we don't actually we don't sell, we don't get any revenue right now for that plastic, um, but we don't pay. They do the transportation free, and it's going to a company in um, Springfield, so it's staying local, uh, North Star Pulp and Paper. Um, so 20 tons. There, I cannot tell you how many pellet bag bags there are in this county. It is just that's hundreds of thousands of pellet bags. That's why I was wondering if you were still doing it without the grant money. So that's wonderful. Yes. I'm really what, thrilled. What we did was we transitioned it to a fee-for-service program. So the towns that have sheds pay $150 to $350 a year, which covers the labor to drive around in our truck 
um, to, to do that. So perfect. You know, not a lot of money. And so, and then the agricultural plastic is, is the same. It's the same thing. And we've tried to encourage town, um, farmers to come directly to us when we're bailing. Yeah. Um, those trailers were a really great idea of mine, but we just have we have to hand unload them most of the time, and so now we try to work it out. So if a farmer calls my office, I said, "Oh, we're bailing next week," and it just goes right into the conveyor, um, right onto the conveyor belt into the baler. So Perfect. that's worked. That's, that's worked really well. Questions about this kind of macro? Well, just it's a it's a different, uh, but I hear every day, including today from Pat, uh, about electronics. Uh, came up at a personnel board meeting earlier this week. People are very much interested in what to do with their electronics, re recycling or disposal. So I got a microwave you, at my house. I'm ready to get rid yeah. of it. Microwave well, can, well, microwave can go in the scrap metal box at the transfer gotcha. station. You, well, yeah, please talk about you know directing yeah, we'll, how we should direct people or what you have to say about sure. that. Okay, well, if you have a microwave, it can go in the scrap metal box at the transfer station. Wonderful. If you have um, electronics are very expensive, uh, they're about $700 a ton right now to dispose of. That's because we are using a company that has been highly vetted and is not sending boxcars to China, and so right. things get dumped in the river or to, you know, Africa. Yep. Um, so the only thing that is banned from the trash are screens. So TVs, computer monitors, uh, laptops, flat screens. Those are the only things that are actually banned. The state has a law saying you cannot throw those things in the trash. Right now, for Deerfield residents, the um, you don't you folks don't collect electronics, so um, people could come to our annual biannual collection in Waitley in May and October. You can go to the Greenfield Transfer Station. Um, Twelve months out of the year, every day they're open. Any resident in the in Franklin County can go to the Greenfield Transfer Station. You pay five dollars as a non-resident entry yeah. fee, and then um, there's a series of fees. Those are on our website. Um, it's pretty pricey. I think Greenfield's like twenty-five bucks for a TV uh, or monitor, and that's because it's so expensive to get rid of. Right. Um, we charge, I think, twenty-five dollars at our May and October collection. So everything else can legally and for the most part safely go into either scrap metal if it's a DVD player, stereo, you know, metal yeah. um, electronic that can go into scrap metal. If it's a printer or, um, uh, you know, I'm just trying to think. Telephones? Of, telephones, yep, bulky waste. Yeah, there's really nothing in um, a printer, like a, like a inkjet printer or... There shouldn't be batteries um, in, in printers? No, I was no where would you take, where would you take Oh, that? sure, if, I mean, if it's a, right, thank you. If it's a portable, if it's a portable telephone, then it's best to pull out the rechargeable battery and um, there's boxes at the transfer station for rechargeable batteries. Do you have a one-pager kind of handout on electronics that we could put up on the website or something like that? Well, we, we have links. We may, oh. we, um, yeah. we have a page on our website there. called What Do I Do With? Okay. okay. And so we're that talks that. about everything from like Ziploc bags to apples. Nice. Um, nice. One thing that we have kicking around here that I never knew how to get rid of was the battery backup batteries. They're oh, yeah. really, yeah. Yep. some of them are quite large. And once we can't replace them, yes. or once we, we have replaced them, what do we do with those? Well, you could bring those to, to the green. transfer station because we manage all the batteries that come through the transfer station and then I literally unscrew it and pull out the lead acid battery inside and well, we recycle it. I've done that already. It. Oh. I've pulled the actual battery right okay. out of the battery okay. backup it can go to the and transfer I buy station. replacement batteries for them. Mm -hmm. But okay, yeah, transfer hasn't station. Been taking I mean, them, lead I acid, sealed lead acid batteries are recyclable at WTE in Greenfield. That's where we take all our lead acid batteries. So Kevin may have a battery yeah, I just program. It out to him. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Can you tell me back to the pellet bags what happens once in the the A plastic, whatever you want, the roll, the big yep. rolls? What happens to them once they're recycled? Are they chewed up and made into they're they're um they're pelletized, they're actually shredded and, and formed into pellets and then that plastic is resold. It's um a plastic called uh, low density polyethylene, L D P E. Um, so it's not a so, situation where the bags can be reused. They have to be remade. 
Yeah, they're, it's basically made into, um, into a recycled plastic pellet that's then made into other, into new bags or new um, plastic. You, you said something about the electronics things, they're shipped over to China to be disassembled? Mm. Oh, they're no. not. Yeah. That's what we're. Leaking. Yeah, well, they're, they're, they're um, yeah, the electronics industry kind of went unchecked for a long time. So some not so Horrible. environmentally socially responsible things have happened. Some companies who are basically um, you know, unethical were just shipping products all over the world and not following what was happening to them. So, created so what is happening to them now? Is so the company, the company we use now is called Metech. Um, they're on the state contract and they, um, they refurbish and reuse what they can and they dismantle and recycle everything else. And their uh, markets are uh, mostly domestic. There's a, a mill in Canada for the glass, for the monitor glass, but our understanding is everything else is handled domestically. So, and that's why it's $700 a ton, which when you think about it, you're paying $70 a ton for your trash. So $700 a ton, um, which is why they will take everything. They will take vacuum cleaners, and we tell towns you know, who have programs it's not worth paying $700 a ton. So you know we have the book. I, I people st at the this was a big topic of discussion the, at the personnel the, meeting for some reason the other night. They just got off on that, but um, on various things about recycling. And um, they said they did not notice that every the books up there now. We gave him permission to have the book. Should be a, a okay. book box. Um, are we settled with the Red Cross or the Salvation mm -hmm. Whoever we've yep, got. Yes, so you now? should have a Salvation Army box there now. Okay, we're set with that. And the other thing is, the other big topic about it at personnel was um, a take it or leave it um, situation, a reuse like they've got right. in Northampton and Amherst, yep. other places. I don't know if we have room there or what, but there was a lot of interest in that. Mm -hmm. and I, That'd be great. Um, and actually, one of the pages that I gave you is an RDP program. If you turn to the, to the very last page of the, of the other handout, um, a few years ago, DP started a program called Recycling Dividends Program, um, affectionately called. I'm sorry, R who started that? DEP. Okay. Um, so it's the it's uh, acronym is RDP, Recycling Dividends Program, and it's a remake of a very old program that was a municipal recycling incentive program back in the 90s, mm -hmm. where towns get money for meeting certain criteria for doing certain positive um, things, positive steps for recycling and, and waste reduction. So I, I gave you the handout for all of the towns who have, have um, received the money. You can see uh, as of June, the awards were $67,000 uh, for the communities that were eligible. And so Deerfield, if you kind of go down, to the, down the Deerfield um, column, you get four points for having a pay-as-you-throw program. You get zero points for having a swap shop. So if you even had um, a three-sided building, if you have something that keeps moisture um, out and had tables in there, you would get $700 a year for just having that. So I was looking at this tonight, and I thought, you know, that's, that's an area that we could yeah. assist with. Um, a lot of towns got swap shops. Um, you know, they're just... Yeah, we uh, well, you look at Waitley. Waitley got one through us through a, through a USDA grant years ago. I think it's probably 8 by 10. Um, it just has shelves, and they clean it out every once in a while. So that would be a, that would be a really great thing, and um, we could work on, you know, you do. I mean, you have enough space up there. Yeah. It's just a question of right now you're separated, so the attendant, you know, it's hard. You don't want to put a shed somewhere where people are going to leave stuff that be. Is not as junk basically, mm -hmm. and and have it be in a location that the attendant can't manage, um, but that's that's a great um, possibility. Um, so just quickly to go down this because I think this is one of the m the most exciting um, things that the town benefits from. Um, you p you have a minimum charge of five dollars for bulky items for three three of those items, so you get a point. Um, you take yard waste, so you get two points. You participate in the hazardous waste collection and are reciprocal. And residents may not know this, but 
Um, the Solid Waste District has agreements throughout Western Massachusetts with other communities. So a resident from Franklin County can go to the Long Meadow collection, or they can go to the Agawam collection, or they can go to, you know, there's one in um, South Hadley, there's one in Northampton in the spring. That's all on the town's website, because it's a requirement in this program, and it's on our website. So if you miss our collection, which is Wait, September 23rd, yeah. um, then you can participate in another collection, and we just have this reciprocal arrangement that it comes off the town's budget. Um, but so you get points for that. Okay. Um, the the next item, the two points you get that says collect a minimum of. You actually don't do this, but um, because residents can go to Greenfield, you get credit. Um, I had to fight for about three years to get that, <laughs> but succeeded. Um, and you have the um, used to have Red Cross now a Salvation Army drop box for textiles. So out of 20 total points, and, and you'll see the point column doesn't add up because I deleted rows to make it all fit. Um, so you get 12 points. They raised the price to $350 uh, a point, so $4,200 um, will be coming in. So this, this I just applied for in June. You'll receive this, these funds in November. I did get a call from a resident about um, or the organics collection, and I... My, what they were told by the town was, oh, people just put it in their backyard. <laughs> you know? So mm -hmm. I don't know if we're that much of a farming community that we, we felt you felt that we didn't need to do any kind of uh, transfer station. No, uh, actually, I mean, that's, that would be another place to um, work. What we've done with a lot of transfer stations is get them a, a – it's a dumpster. So you get a two-yard dumpster. The route is um, serviced by Triple T Trucking out of Brattleboro. They're all over. I mean, you just look behind restaurants and anywhere, and you'll see Triple T Trucking compost. You know, they'll say organics only. Mm -hmm. um, it's, I think, depending on the size, about 80 bucks a month um, in the winter. What we do is we usually have them come every two weeks in the winter and every week in the summer. Mm -hmm. And then residents can, you know, take their kitty little litter pails or five-gallon buckets and... Mm -hmm. If you don't have a yard and you want to compost, um, I don't know you just what the history is here talking about, whether to offer that or not. So, you, you know, about that. it's a, it's a budget item. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think more towns, especially towns that have pay as you throw, you know, it's a nice um, service to offer, like the pellet bags. I mean, the town would be paying for it. Um, they don't, typically towns don't charge to access the um, food waste, but people could put pizza boxes in there or waxed cardboard. I mean, it takes... Mm -hmm. That dumpster would take a whole bunch of things that can't be recycled. Right. Um, you know. We're always throwing pizza boxes in the trash. And no yeah. Idea. Yeah. Greasy pizza it boxes. Feels bad. Yeah. Yeah. It feels wrong. If um, <laughs> if do you get two points then for having the dumpster? Yeah. yeah so, so seven. You say that would translate to seven hundred dollars. And yeah. If and it's you might, eighty dollars a month, I mean, it's not right. Be, you might spend nine hundred dollars and. So, so this forty-two hundred dollars rolls over. So every year, there's you don't have to spend it. Thank goodness um, by the by the fiscal year deadline, um, it can go to pay for any of these services. So you could actually use some of that forty-two hundred dollars to pay your for your organic dumpster. You could hmm. use that forty-two hundred dollars to buy the swap shed, you know, right. to to lay a small pad, or you could just put it put it up on on blocks or something. I mean, it doesn't need a basement. So it can be did pretty. Did we spend our last year's money? Do spend you, the do, last what? Did we spend last year's money offhand? Do you know? I don't think. No, I think you guys have a balance. Oh, I can't remember. Yeah. I have to report it. D, this is where DP, you know, there's a great disconnect because they require tracking of all of your tonnage on a calendar year basis. Mm -hmm. And these funds, they award on a fiscal year basis, but I have to track the expenses on a calendar year basis. So yeah. it's a little bit clunky, but yeah. um, I'm well, pretty sure, because this is, this is probably the third year you've been in this program. Um, this is maybe the fourth year, uh, this 2017 money. So it can be used for anything not trash-related. It has to be a um, recycling or waste reduction service, but that would be um, a great idea. Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, what about our recycling? Do you have any um, 
do you see a trend with us at all, and what can we do to well, improve that's, the trend? Yeah, so the, so the first page, we don't have to go over. That's just the, the revenue you've received last fiscal year for your recyclables, mm -hmm. um, which is not anywhere near what it used to be, but it's better than zero. And then the next um, page looks like looks like uh, looks like I photocopied it all backwards. Um, but the but the next page is comparisons of calendar year 15, 16 recyclables. And you can see that you actually did a little bit more um, paper, 10 tons more paper than calendar 2015 and a little less in containers. Um, so your so your recycling, you know, pretty much was was level, but almost every town is. I mean, if you look at the totals for the county, you know, we're we're not very. Um, there's not a, a real big difference there. Um, if you go a couple more, well, let's go to the next page. Um, so what I do every year is I compare 20 previous calendar years. So if you go to Deerfield, you did less trash, 11 tons less trash. That's fabulous. Um, you did, uh, what, 45 tons, almost 46 tons, uh, 7 tons less in bulky waste, which you know, in the big scheme of things is, is probably a good thing. Um, and you did 10 tons more scrap metal, which you get paid for. So that trend across the board is excellent. Less trash, less bulky waste, more scrap metal. The next page should have been the first page, but clearly it went into the copier wrong. Um, what I do is I calculate recycling just on bottles, cans, and paper versus trash. I, I exclude scrap metal and bulky waste because not every town accepts those. Yeah. And, you know, your recycling rate went up almost a percent, 0.8 percent, um, 36 percent, which is just above the district's average. Um, so I'd say that's positive, you know, and, and why? Who knows? Could be the attendance or, you know, interacting with residents more could be you know new signage we've given could just be people are suddenly more stepping up um, I did I just want to recall um, asking you some people were talking to me about it so I said okay I'll check in how wh would it be feasible for us to go to curbside pickup I thought you were going to explode. <laughs> Tell me why. That was a minor explosion. Tell us why that Yeah, well, is... that was not. I only explode when I'm talking to no, the state. No, not in a negative I'm way. I'm talking just to the, a, to oh the my state goodness. I explode. <laughs> yeah, so um, curbside recycling, there's a few towns that have curbside, um, Irving, Gill, and Montague. And it's extremely expensive. And so what I did was I figured out, I just took... Um, Irving and Gill's average per household and then extrapolated it to Deerfield. And I think we were over $350,000. What Was happened to Sunderland's curbside program? Sunderland's curbside went in a Act 250 override. Oh, when every failure went away, right. Yeah. Greenfield does it too. Greenfield, yeah. Green, sorry. Greenfield is not a member not town a member, of the Solid Waste yeah. District anymore. Oh. We work with them closely. They use our sludge hauling contract. Oh. We do the pellet bag I program with why them. they weren't listed here. Yeah, they, they pulled out in 2000, so... We have a nice working relationship, and they're not on my board. So that's, that works. works. That works well. They would have <laughs> um, out. So yes, I think, I think just per, the, per household. I mean, you can imagine the, the, um, the infrastructure to have a truck on the road and be picking up probably you know, two days a week in town or one day a week and yeah. picking up trash and recycling. It's not good for the environment. So Those yeah, there's a trade-off, right? Of that. You know, it's... Yeah. So I think when, when Wendy called me, I said, well, let me just calculate, you know, an average per household. And then, does that number sound right? That was a little while ago. I think it was like 350 or... Yeah, I just remember when I was in Sunderland oh. years ago, we had that. And we looked at, and I remember it being very, very affordable. Not a big cost compared to the landfill costs that they had had right. a few years earlier. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, the other thing in Deerfield is you have... Only a thousand households, I think, using your transfer station. Does that sound right? I think there's a thousand permits. Is that per sticker? Is that you're doing stickers? Sticker? Yeah. yeah. So a, a <laughs> large portion or, or significant portion of your town has like do so trucking. Let's say for right. the, you know they're already privatized right. and having curbside um, paying out of pocket. And so to shift the entire burden of the of the town onto a uh, curbside 
financially, I don't think it's yeah, advisable. Yeah. So. so that's kind of my, um, Great. you know, Great I tell people I can talk about trash all night. So <laughs> I can stay as long as you want to keep me and... Um, Thank you, you know, for the overview. Yeah, wanted to give you a sense of fast. what we're doing. Um, um, I'm very appreciative that you took the time to come back and see us. Yeah. Yeah. Well, hopefully. Are we the first town you're coming to? Uh, yes. I know I responded immediately. Right? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I have a couple. <laughs> Absolutely. Thank you. Um, in condominium complexes, they have like a central area where residents, you small ones, we put everything in the area. Has anything ever been considered in towns having like every certain place like a centralized dumpster instead of everybody driving to the dump of the thousand households mm -hmm. twice a week? Or Transfer or station. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, that's okay. Instead of a thousand households driving to the transfer station once or twice a week, you know, consider all that gas that's being used. Is that ever thought about? It's not thought about because um, I think it would not, most likely trying to, to um, coordinate that from a, uh, like a financial perspective. Mm -hmm. Like how would you pay, how would you? Where would you put them in? You'd have, to, well, you'd have to make sure somebody would have to be monitoring them 24 seven if they were just, okay. you know, unstaffed open containers. Depi d depends on the size of it. I live in a yeah. well, 90 you know about unit one. We, we don't. Elderly housing or whatever it's being called, mm -hmm. Sugarloaf Street. You know, if there was a centralized dumpster there, or a couple of them, where instead of each resident, of all 70 of them, whatever, driving, mm -hmm. driving to the dump. Most, most likely they will end up with private. Yeah. They'll, have a, They'll private, have a private contractor. Yeah. Go ahead. That's what we do where yeah. I am. What, what I thought you were going to say is, and this is really a, in a, a challenge for the solid waste district um, haven't figured out how to crack this nut is we have very little control over apartment buildings or uh, multifamily mm -hmm. household mm -hmm. landlords so I regularly get calls from people who move in to an apartment building say there's no recycling mm -hmm. here and everything goes in the trash well there's a state law that bans the disposal of recyclables but you know I'm not the police, I'm not the environmental recycling police. And so in those situations, we try to inform the resident, okay, here's, here's the law, your landlord or your building owner can't allow that and we can help you set something up, we'll come in and we'll set it up. Um, but that happens pretty frequently. You know, people don't wanna pay for recycling so they just have a dumpster. That's what I thought you were gonna say. That's, that's been- well, that will tell you. That's been a challenge for me for, you know, two decades, is how do you get those facilities to do it? Maybe they will now that they're watching. <laughs> so. Well, thank you very much. Yes. You're quite welcome. Thank you so much. I really, I really uh, appreciate you coming in, Jan. And, and M.A., thank you for going to the meetings and representing us. No, seriously, M. thank you. M.A.'s yeah. fabulous. You have another rep, too. There yes, of yes, there is Tim two. Tim Fannin, but we've kind of lost track of Tim. He kind of retired and I think he retired. doesn't come much anymore. Yeah, yeah I don't know what's happened. Do so we appoint? You, is that, that might, that might be appointed someone by the board? Asking him if he'd like to, if, if he wants yeah. to. Yeah, we appoint. Because yes. we have two votes, and he never shows, so we only have one. I mean, uh, if it may, not that it ever makes any difference. So many Tim controversies at the district. Yes, right. <laughs> Usually our meetings are full of laughter. Who is this other representative? Tim, Tim Fannin. Tim Fannin, he's, he's he been on the board for a long time. He's a great guy. He comes to the meetings. He worked, used to work for the Fish and Wildlife in um, Hadley, South Hadley. Mm -hmm. And um, he retired, and we've kind of lost track of him. Yeah. Oh. I mean, he retired from that was his, his, point. his job, and he's, <laughs> yes. you know, he may be off in the wilds. Right. Should we talk about the compactor? The, Only if you'd like. Uh, so we've discussed, uh, we rent them? Yes. We at least them? To, well, can you just talk you about, own, explain okay. what we've been doing? So right now, you have a trash compactor. You all know it's really, it's a unique design. Never, there's not a, another design like that in the county. Um, and two uh, compactors for paper. The compactor, the paper compactors came through a DEP grant. So those you own, they've probably all paid off now. Uh, the, 
the state gave you about gave you 50% of that cost. The trash compactor has always been rented, and so you've probably paid enough rent for at, to own at least two or three compactors in the multiple decades of that facility. Um, a couple of years ago, we switched hauler. Well, just before our contract switched, you guys um, had Wickles Trucking, and it, that was through my office. And the compactor, which was really old, I think caught on fire or something, the motor. Yeah, there, anyways. So um, that got pulled out. Wickles put in a, another compactor, and then he lost the bid, and so then he pulled his compactor out. And at that point, I asked the town whether they wanted to purchase a compactor or rent one, and the decision was to keep renting one. I mean, this was through Kevin. Mm -hmm. He had just transitioned, I think, at this time, too. It was, like, right in the beginning. Um, you pay $350 a month rent for the unit and the box, the compactor box. Um, a new compactor costs about $15,000. So you said 15? 15,000. Okay. Yeah. Maybe maybe even a little. Actually, it would be less because you wouldn't it might be closer to 11 because you wouldn't need the um, you could use the same hopper, you know, the same yeah. entrance. So, you know, my, it's not, again, it's, you know, what, what serves the town, but at some point you just are buying, you're paying in rent what you could own. Um, and, you know, waste management services it it's through waste management now. I mean, they service it and maintain it. And if there's a problem, they fix it. How long do they last? Um, the town of Roe had one that was 32 years old. Um, Typically, 15 years is what we say you'll get at least 15. But, you know, the quantity of trash that goes in these units in our communities is so minimal that, you know, 20 years, they, they you know, they're, they're pretty hardy. Well, I and when I checked in with Kevin, he was enthusiastic about this idea. About so. switching and buying it? Yeah, but I don't so, know if it's on the capital plan. Right. So, so. so one thing I've done, and, you know, my, my job is to help the town get what they capital. need and do it. Um, you know, in a financially feasible way. So what I've done in, in other instances is go to the vendor and say, the town wants to buy a compactor. You can pull yours out and we'll go buy one from Aguirre Equipment or we can buy yours, deduct, deduct the rent from the purchase price and let's do, you know, let's just buy the unit that you've put in. Um, if they can assure me that it was a new unit and, <clears throat> you know, it's, it's been maintained. And then that way, there's not this huge thing of, like, ripping it out and having another company install one. Um, so that if you wanted to do that, we could do that. You're already paid two years of rent, so, um, like, $4,000, 8000 in, maybe. Oh, my God, I know. It's so. crazy not to. Yeah. It is kind of crazy. <laughs> Well, I mean, I'm will. I'm willing to. I mean, I could work up some stuff. I could at least go to waste management and say the town wants to know what it would cost to yes. purchase this, and I'm happy to do that and kind of nickel and dime them. Yes, yeah. that would be great. Yeah, and then what would happen is you could rent. You wouldn't have to buy the container. The haulers rent that for fifty dollars a month, so they cost about seven grand new, but. I encourage towns for 600 bucks a year to rent the box, buy the compactor, just rent the container. Yeah. Um, okay. Well, that was Thank good. You. Thanks for bringing yeah. that up, Wendy. Is there anything else you can think of? Um, <laughs> yeah, anywhere else we can say? Well? When she said she wanted a half hour earlier this evening as we were emailing, I said, oh, no, no one gets a half an hour to select where it's meeting. But, you um, talk trash. You but can you, have a half hour. Yeah. <laughs> you, you, it was three days. I need three days. <laughs> what occurred to me listening to you was you were preceded by a whole a conversation about having difficulty with the professional in the private sector taking advantage of us, possibly. And here you are going above and beyond to try to save money for every single town. Well, so that's I, my I'm job. Very, 
I'm touched oh, know, to say that you. by the level of work. Thanks, and I, I know the work that it's done. I, yeah. Oh, yeah. We've crossed paths in many, many yes. other towns that I've been yes. in. and um, Other incarnations. Really done a great job over many years. Thank you. I would second that. And thank yes. you. Thank you. Well, I it know is that my, they do a fantastic well. job. Yep, yes. and I thank you. I, I have great coworkers. You know, Amy Donovan does a smash up job in the schools. And I just yeah. got the email from her that she sent out to uh, landfill attendants for training. They awesome. do training. Yeah, transfer, for the transfer the station landfill. attendants. Transfer yep. station. Sorry. Yeah, <laughs> Sorry. that's okay. Yep. And and they didn't have enough sign ups or something. So they're but the the tour of the recycling Murph. facility in Springfield right. is still on. So they do yeah. education in the schools. That's great. You know. Well, no, Tremendous amount. Well, we big bang for our one. Of, one of the first things that happened was at when I became the director in 2000. I'd been working at the district, and I was going to sweat board meetings, and they were just like, "We don't get our money's worth. We don't get our money's worth." And I thought, "You're right. You're not getting your money's worth." So I've been determined for 17 years to make sure that towns get their money's worth. Yeah. So and if well, we can, and if we can save you money, you know, that. Yeah. yeah. Well. That's, you know, we're all and kind of... And I also, you know, what it is also is just the help because, um, you know, when we've over the years tried to um, cut down what we subsidize the transfer station, you've been very, very helpful. Mm -hmm. Thank that, you. You know, well, and you're always good about answering questions. And, yes, anytime. You know, and and residents up. should call or email our office anytime. That's our favorite part of I the know. job is well, answering questions. You're always helping towns. wonderful about so, that. And I appreciate thank you. that. Well, hopefully we'll... Just keep having a great relationship. Yes. Thank, Thank you, you for coming. All right. Know if we need to uh, find another person. To... Thank you. Do you want to tell us? Can you skip it on the side? Oh, yeah. Sure. Yes. Here's um, this. I gave that to you. Well, we can skip down. The right hand. The solid um, waste. Con the, uh, the no, no, no. We'll oh, sign it. We can go right down and do it right now. The sludge Sorry. hauling contract. Did you make a motion, or do we need one? or? To sign. I'll make the motion to um, sign our annual contract. I'll second the motion. Any further discussion? All those uh, in favor? Aye. 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 Just a little comment. It's, a li it's been a little delayed because Kevin was looking into um, uh, whether we have another opportunity, a less costly opportunity, um, and it didn't pan out. So we're happily sticking with this plan. Yes, for sludge hauling. And, you know, my philosophy of those men in the town can do it cheaper for the work. I'm not the kind of person who says, no, we're going to use our contract and save more money. That's ridiculous. Yeah. Um, if you find another alternative, then let me know because maybe the other towns can save more with you. Um, Kevin could not. But he tried and he thought about it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We have many witnesses that she took it. We know where to find So we don't have No, I just have my nose for hazardous. Which we don't yep. even need that. You don't? No. Because they do it. Yeah. Thank you. Sure. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you gentlemen. So I guess we don't um, have why don't we, okay, we, we took care of that. Um, why don't we do the annual contract for um, the FERC hog, the technical assistance, and then um, go back and, or Kip, did we feel, did you feel that we had enough discussion of the Captain Lathrop pump? I sure think so. I gotta find okay. that contract. Um, well, well, while you're looking for that contract, well, we could. You don't have it up there, do you? Uh, no, I have only the transfers. Yeah, I've not seen that yet. I, I think I, that we're good for that. Okay, well, I, I, I'm, I really feel that this is the kind of, what you've identified is the kind of thing that, you know, you it's like having a lawyer, you know, like, I don't want to say one of the more popular firms in the state. You, you have to have a relationship sure. and you know what you get because when you have different engineers come through and and you don't have that there isn't anybody looking out for your best interest as a professional you do you get taken advantage of totally I have a question um, that's why you know I like us having recent need versus 
mm -hmm. the, some of the other choices. Sure. I, um, could, uh, I just wanted to know where we're at for the, um, maybe hit this on the other discussions, but the sewer study committee and where we're at. Uh, when we get before. to the we'll get down to that okay. yeah because okay. um i i wanted kip's input onto what i mean we we obviously know that that's a priority so correct what what i was hoping to do was to get some kind of timeline from you that or advice on what we were going to do in for, what, for the sewer okay yeah i um, mean we don't have to get into that right now I, we can go back why wendy's looking for that under contract um there was just a couple uh, yeah, no, we got that. Um, the cheap side bridge letter I wanted to go out. Um, we could do the CIPC appointments. Pat, do you have, um, or do I have that? Yeah. And we can do the transfers. Yeah. Let's get those two things. Those, yeah. those two things need to get done. Okay. For CIPC, we have Kenneth Cutterback. We'll make a motion, okay, and it's Kenneth, Ken Cutterback. Ken Cutterback, Jeff Upton, Rachel Blaine, and Francis Sobieski. That's only four. I thought we had five. That's the capital improvement? No. That's CIPC. And I think that, and then there's the two others at the moderator. And the moderator appointed okay. John Davey and Allison Vander Velden. Okay. Okay. Um, I make a motion to appoint those. I'll second it. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Um, the two transfers. Um, the first transfer is for $13,791.05 to be transferred from this highway account. Is this a highway? Highway yeah. projects account to the um, Stillwater Bridge repair account. This was, um, we were allowed to deficit spend by DOR, and this is the amount of money that was spent, 13,700. I know, That's it was nice. wicked good. So, um, so well, do I have a second? Make a second on that. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Why? We gotta sign that one fast. Yeah, that's a great deal. <laughs> that was excellent. Again, thank you, Kevin. Um, the next transfer is in the amount of $20,000. It's being transferred from the workers' compensation account to be transferred to the unemployment insurance account, which has a negative balance of $13,006.28 currently. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 The main reason for that is because it's hard to um, anticipate school layoffs. Oh. Those are the originals. Oh. Are so those, originals? Oh, okay. oh, those aren't the originals? Yeah, no, that's um, your copy, I think. Oh. Yeah, I tagged them. Sorry. I'm sorry. No, I'm sorry. I am was having everybody fill them out. I thought they we're were the originals. <laughs> Waste of ink, guys. Sorry. Okay. My feet will never run out. Right? <laughs> <laughs> You're getting into this. <laughs> okay. I, I assume you're passing it back. Okay, or so we're we're like, gonna go back. Um, you see it? Oh, it was right here. Oh. Yeah. Or it was kind of more. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> um, we're gonna go back up to the five and ten follow-up letter. Um, Wendy, did you have any questions on that? I, I didn't. I don't have a letter for you. So no, um, that's fine. Okay. Just put it on next week's agenda. Okay. It's, it, there's no rush. They're not going to do it for a couple of years. But I just oh, more than that. I'm sorry, but it'll be <laughs> well, we need to get a letter in. Uh, but I do want to reassure you that they are. Um, well, we, you talked about this, I think, last time. Um, they will be having their next meeting. You you saw the email from the chief um, on design for this section. Yep. Right over here, yep. um, uh, in six months. I don't know how long, he, and it will happen here. So there'll be plenty input. But they got a lot of input from uh, town officials, uh, chief and Kevin Scarborough and uh, planning board, 
Rachel right. Blaine was there, so we'll have input into that. Okay. Um, I, <laughs> so back to um, what you asked about the, um, if you could just vote, it, we're, um, I will find it that was with the, the planning board the other night. They said go, yes, they approve um, re-signing for Pat Smith services for the same amount that we contracted with before. Correct. So if you could vote that, then I can get a, somebody's signature during the week. So or I, make, I can sign it if you want me to. So I make a motion to approve the... And the, authorize Wendy and to sign. Authorize Wendy to sign the um, contract for Pat Smith services with the FERCOG. I'll second the motion. If there's no further discussion, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Um, the only other thing was the Cheapside Bridge. I had several phone calls because the article in the... Right. Recorder said that we were encouraging the Stillwater Bridge, and that was not true. It was the Cheapside Bridge. So oh. um, mm -hmm. we want to make sure that we get a letter to you, DCR. To get Andy back in the room, you bring this up again. <laughs> yeah. um, I don't know well, if he did the story, though. I, don't, I wasn't sure. Uh, he's in the room. The, um, the, the deal with, with is that... Um, River Portage, Deerfield River Portage, and the, even the state website is encouraging use on the Deerfield River, but there's no more additional access. So we need to send a letter, not just because of people are upset that there are, you know, they don't want stuff happening at Stillwater. There just is no official access. Stillwater is just a natural bank. It's never meant for a huge amount of traffic going up and down it. And so this, by cheap side, the state has got the land and they need to develop it for, and they were going, going to develop it um, before the economy crashed in 2008 um, as a handicap access to the Deerfield River. So they need to, you know, they were going to put parking there. They were going to um, boat, ramp. boat ramp, the whole Where thing. Where they going to do that? You know, if you go if you go over the Cheapside Bridge, yep. immediately between there and the house, yep. that's state-owned land yep. and there's access when, to the that's river. Pretty, that's pretty steep there. I would, they would never couldn't get a boat ramp there. They were going to develop it as a boat ramp, and it was going to be handicapped. I think the reason the they may not have done it is because there's so much elevation. You'd never they'd be there. pulling trucks and trailers out of the river all the time. No, but they would still. I mean, they have yeah. to develop. I mean, obviously, they have to build it out. It was supposed to be handicap accessible. Hmm. Put a big park in and... Well, not that much land there. The I, there isn't a lot of land there, but the design that I saw was going to make it handicap accessible, plus parking, there was going to addition, you know, parking issues. Or hmm. Whatever. But we need, to, we need to encourage them to have some kind of official access into the river and not just natural riverbank and expect people to go up and down the riverbank and then we be responsible for are the they, erosion. Are people parking under the bridges now? And I see people They're still having there parking there problems. There. It's parking problems, to say the least. People are getting ticketed and there's complaints about that. But I'm sorry. They're, they're, that is not a public, you know, there's not public access. So. And speaking of that, we need a parking clerk. Oh. Billino used to handle those appeals of those kinds of parking tickets. I don't know if you recall appointing him to do that. And what, since he I'm not really sure. I mean, uh, Bill sort of just was willing to do it. Mm -hmm. Now that he doesn't want to do it okay. anymore, we'll have to we have to find someone to do it. So, well, anybody that would like to be a parking ticket appeals person, <laughs> let Wendy you know. Are you going to pay them? <laughs> no, it's a volunteer job. Yeah. <laughs> the chief and I are talking about it. it might be something that I end up doing, but um, I'm not sure you want someone who lo who supervises or quasi supervises the department doing their job. So, any rate, um, we'll get back to you on that. Yeah. Um, but it, we need to actually move quickly because he has had an appeal, and if we we can't use the process that the town has adopted, then um, we don't. We get rid of the tickets. So. Can we in, appoint you as a temporary appeal person? Um, I th I don't know. I'll have to research that. But it, I'll, yeah, um, because I make I've been researching it, and somehow, and Dick and I talked about this today. There was something called a municipal hearings officer, and that they folded those two together, and and part of that job involves hearing fire and building related issues, and a lot of towns adopted that, and we didn't apparently, but 
they combine those two. So I had some confusion, and I was doing some research on this. We, and we, you know, uh, we just apparently did one for the civil, you know, the um, civil alternative uh, code, in, uh, not code, but enforcement, civil enforcement um, statute that the town adopted, mo most towns did. It's for, you know, levying fines for civil instead of people having to go through a criminal process. So at any rate, I'll get back to you on that, but it's a... Can we do it issue. temporarily so that you, I mean, could we do it tonight temporarily so that you could do the, so this appeal? You could try. I, I will, you could do that, and if it's, I will make sure it's legitimate, and if it's not, we'll do Come something. Back. We'll <laughs> fix it next Okay, Sunday. I make a motion that we appoint Wendy temporarily, as the temporary, or the interim, um, interim parking appeal person. Parking clerk. Is that I'll second I think motion. that's what it's called. Parking yeah. clerk? Yeah, I think that's what it's called in other communities all right well that's the duties is basically the, your duty is to so hear the appeal of parking tickets yeah and okay. uh, and other and adjudicate fairly yes honestly. <laughs> <laughs> all those in favor yeah. oh did you second that no. second oh, Although, Kip, oh Kip, 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 second. thank you all right all those in favor aye, aye. all right at least it's on my i've Dippity been researching dough. yes just so somebody doesn't get upset about not having a proper appeal. Um, so do you have someone, and, and now John came to me. I don't have anyone where I can send people. Uh, so yeah. without yeah. an alternative, I have to. I know that's it. that's actually a problem. Okay, um, town administrator's report. Was there anything? Oh, I was just going to update you on things you probably know or should know that I'm doing. Um, I, we, Priscilla and I interviewed seven out of the thirteen candidates, fourteen that uh, for the position of executive assistant. And um, we're bringing four back, and um, I don't know when. Hopefully next week, um, but I'm trying to get out from some major work that's been going on. Thank um, you for doing the um, getting the RFP out for the Cessors. Oh, uh, then that's my next subject. Oh, <laughs> uh, today, and thank you, Pat, for your assistance. Who's uh, finally the um, five-year contract for the Cessors to get have recertification services will be in all the state bureaucracy right at the right time in the newspaper on the bulletin board on the website there's a, a big chunk of work to get that done thank so, you um and hopefully that'll make their work go smoother when that's in place wendy was that an rfp for the services or was that actually the contract to a particular company it's just the rfp okay and then we received both price and non-price of sure. you know okay. realize the distinction between an rfp and an, yep. a bid okay sure so um, I sent you from the attorney from counsel the letter about the research on the sewer. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, we'll study that more, take that under advisement, I guess, yeah. and discuss that future meeting. Um, that involved a number of conversations between me and sure. counsel. Um, tomorrow or Friday, I guess, we're going to talk with our virtual town hall who hosts our website, talk about... Um, maybe re returning to the previous um, design, okay. um, but I, I, at I least finding some up. kind of, sorry? Can I bring something You can bring it, of course, it's your meeting. Well, I didn't want to interrupt. I just, thank you for inviting I just, me. I had run into somebody that um, had offered for many years to, uh, for free, to set up our town website and host it. And then, um, we weren't interested, weren't interested, weren't interested. Now we obviously need a much better website and much better social media contact with our residents. You know, technology is changing. People are going online for this stuff. We need to be accessible. We need to get this stuff out to people in a clear, concise, very easy to look at on a phone, on a website, on a tablet, whatever. This person would offer offered to help again. Obviously, not free this time. Many years later, um, but I wanted to bring. Why? Uh, <laughs> do they have? Do they have many she parking? Asked, she asked like five or six times for free. We said no. So now she's going to charge us. Does um, she happen to have many parking tickets? She may. Okay. We may be able to do a deal. <laughs> <laughs> Judge Wendy will let you know. I will. I'll just. I'll bring. I'll bring it up to you at later at a later time. But I'll, I'll get. Um, gathering some information on that because our our website needs some serious help. I don't understand well, how the same I, company 
can okay. what do I, really good no, um, for another town. And I'm interrupting well, okay, you. Okay, let me let me explain I don't what understand I understand. That. Pat, correct me if I'm wrong. We had a website with their standard design. I guess they had another design that uh, Doug Finn preferred, and it got switched. And um, but we hadn't kept up. We have to do most of it. Once that is in place, we have to constantly, you know, keep up with it, get the right information. They do the design, but we enter the, all the information. We can design it however we want. You can choose some other virtual town hall layout and choose to have it laid out exactly as somebody else's. Well, that's what like I just said. Like, what we, what we used to have, a, yeah, we used to have one, and he, for some reason, chose to, uh, to change the, the whole platform, which, which created other well, kinds lost, of issues. We lost all the Board of Health stuff. I don't know what happened. I don't really know. I just think it's, well, I find it hard to find things myself. I, yeah. I, and I so we're going to be, Pat and I are going to talk with Virtual Town Hall. I'm trying to understand what our contract is, what we pay for, and, and how much, and exactly. you know what, what kind of help we get from them. You've said that you would like there to be, and I have that in the job description. For the executive assistant to really take a big role in in that um, and maintaining it constantly, and um, you know we're going to enter. And be in Everything's going to be through and be our in website. In charge of social media. I mean, we we've got to have a social media. Yeah, presence. I actually brought to the personnel board uh, social media policy to consider mm -hmm. um, a couple actually, because I, any rate, um, as it's still instead of waiting for a whole year to have a whole policy put together, there might be certain things you know on addressing every personnel issue. There might be certain things that we want to, we can take policy by policy, mm -hmm. and since that's been one you've brought up before, I think we should have a policy. Otherwise, Definitely. we don't have any guidance yep. for who and what and when and all of that. So um, that's All of that. the announcements that I put on the main page of the website, I also put on Channel 15, and I also put on the Facebook page. Mm -hmm. Oh, good. So when you're saying... That. Social media. What are we referring to exactly? More than that. The only More. thing we don't More have is Twitter, and nobody has full time T town interaction with our with our people. You'll see. We'll get it moving. We need, we need I, I'm not the person to ask. I would defer to you. Well, I'm but, not either. But well, I, I think we have to give some thought to what our Correct. Facebook presence is. Absolutely. The police department has done their thing. We also have to think about all the other departments that are actually under the board. You know, do we, I know. that's what these policy about. Correct. Most communities have adopted them and they, they, they change as technology changes. You've got to keep, oh, here's something else that's going on. Oh, let's, you know, keep up with it. Policies around, con you know, whether we allow other people to comment Correct. or simply read, those kinds of things. Right. You know, some guidance around that rather than Absolutely. seat of the pants. Um, so that's, you know, you responding to that interest. Um, uh, yeah, so I was at the personnel board meeting, and we're starting to go back once again to look at the personnel policies as an alternative to having everything in the bylaw. And, um, and so that's what we were doing the other night. Um, I'm going to guide them through that because it can be overwhelming. Um, the district, the DLTA, downtown downtown South Deerfield project. Um, just heard back from um, Jessica Atwood today. You know, she said, I need a couple of days. And all of a sudden, she's doing a tour. And she's, I said, I'd like to join her. She's going to like walk around and do a sort of a building survey. Um, and then we talked about possibly having a, a meeting um, before your first August meeting on the 7th, maybe at 5.30 before the board meets just to have a few of the people who've come to me who yes. own property or own a business just to meet. Yeah. And they're just doing some very basic information sure. gathering. So we have people to make sure that people are not running away and thinking, oh, we're going to redesign at this point. Right. This is the starting point. Yep. Um, and there's been multiple starting points. We need to bring them all together and see what Absolutely. we've done already yep. and um, move along from there. Um, I can stop there, I think. I'll stop. 
Okay. We got I um I want to go on to our the last really important item is discussing our priorities and planning, but I do want to just um, mention that uh, the mosquitoes we've been testing mosquitoes this month in um, June, and um, everything has been negative. Clearly, there's um, a huge number of mosquitoes compared to last year at this mm -hmm. time, um, because we how many are, do we have this year? Oh, it's multiple. No, it's multiple, multiple. No. Spend articles what, in the, the paper daily. Yeah, from I know. County, it's pretty, but nothing. But they're all um, proving to be negative. Um, yes. I, what is really interesting? We're trying to um, correlate between precipitation. And last fall was dry, so right. hopefully we won't have any Tripoli circulating because the swamps are That's taking the time to fill up. Yeah. Um, but West Nile is what has already been a hit on both sides of this, um, both ends of the state. So West Nile is is the, what is going to be at risk for this year, and it, and that's a constant rain kind of thing. But patrolling your yards and dumping out every every standing water, anything that's hold water, even a bottle cap, um, will really have impact. And I have um, a problem with that because I, there's a lot of buckets in my yard and I went around dumping out the water and my wife attacked me telling me her horse needed to drink. So. <laughs> oh, yeah, but... As long as you freshen it. No, freshen as long as you up. do it every... At least, I mean, you should <clears throat> give them fresh water every day, but... Um, as long as you do the watering troughs and the buckets and stuff uh, um, on a regular basis within two days, then no eggs will hatch. But it's also important people don't realize that you just need to scrub it, sometimes just swishing out with your hand. I yeah. mean, that's what I do. But you can take a brush um, and just brush out the insects. Because the eggs will stick to the side. So, yeah. you know, you're, even if you're just dumping out the water, it doesn't necessarily mean you're getting rid of the eggs. Yeah. So it's really important to be um, cognizant. But there will be a huge impact. The highway department um, uh, is putting discs in the catch basins um, because this is what um, mosquitoes that carry West Nile are really called catch basin mm -hmm. mosquitoes because that's a major source. So the highway department is putting the discs in the um, catch basins and, you know, that kind of thing. So um, we really appreciate that, and they'll, and they'll run through that in August and September. So um, Dick got enough discs to make sure that we are covered through the main risks period of time in the highway department. We appreciate that. Um, and the other, only other thing I just wanted to mention, um, I went to the REPC meeting um, the, yesterday, and um, one of the things that came up was the Wendy um, put in for the grants. The grants are coming due, but there's no EMS representative. So I, I thought we'd bring that up at the boo, mm -hmm. um, see if we could get Zach to start going to the meetings. The meetings are only quarterly, but yeah. I mean they're talking Absolutely. about the mass casualty um, plan and implementing, and there was no EMS person That's there, crazy. and that That's is sure yeah I know. And um, okay. they okay. also had a thing on the debris management, yes, um, the which we approved. Debris, debris removal. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but um, what's very interesting is we had approved our debris management plan, mm -hmm. and um, uh, and I talked to Michael Nelson, and we we really need to sort out um, our, how we're going to work with Montague if there was an issue, um, because they have agreed to be our. Um, yeah. receiving site yeah. and and the FEMA reimbursement is 85% for the first 30 days 80% for 60 days and 70% if it goes longer so I mean if we have an event that's a considerable amount of money mm -hmm. um, so we want to make sure I mean uh, all of a sudden it's like oh that is a lot of money that we so we need to have some so discussion sure we're getting it back. Yeah. I, I'm, I guess I'm not following you <clears throat> that money in case there's a say a hurricane yep. or a disaster, trees down, what, a so tornado, whatever. Are you saying that we get reimbursed only if we're very quick with our response? No, no, no. Um, the FEMA will reimburse you if you have an um, yep. approved plan, which we do. Okay. And we have a receiver site that's already approved, set up in Montague. Um, Why does it have to be out of town though? Um, well, it doesn't. It's just that Montague is an approved DEP site and is willing to do um, be the receiving area for neighbor, you know, a few neighboring towns in Franklin County. 
There's there's six sites. What else? There's six sites set up in Franklin County, and that's the closest one to us. Hmm. And it do you what, is, what take what does it take to become a site? Well, what I'm, I guess what I'm gathering at is if we had that much debris, why couldn't we just do it local instead of going all? If the way it was to a Monday? large, if it was a large, yeah. um, if it was a tornado. Yeah we would go to Montague because it would be too much of a hassle to set up a site. But if it was huge area involved, like say a hurricane mm -hmm. and it was, everybody was involved, then Montague would be overwhelmed. Sure. So we, then you would have an emergency situation. So DEP would suspend some of the requirements that we can't meet. So where you can store yeah. That would be in the emergency. Believe me, those stuff. things. Yeah. Um, do you happen but, to know where they're going to do that? The planes or something? Probably. I, I was talking to Mike about it, and, and he's like, "Well, you know, <laughs> we need to work, sort this out with the, you know, the FERCOG because the FERCOG got sent it up, and so we need to yeah, follow up sure on it." Yeah. yeah. And the the only other thing is, there was a big article in the newspaper about the um, DUP, uh, yes. DPU, um, mm. continuing the moratorium for Berkshire Gas, and I just wanted it in the minutes that I am very appreciative of the $25,000 anonymous donation that was given to the town of Deerfield and Montague to hire the witnesses, expert witnesses. I don't, we don't really know who it was supposedly, right. but anyway, it was, we're, we're very grateful. So no tax dollar money was spent and the expert witnesses, even though we didn't prevail, um, was, they they it was made it uh painful i think for berkshire gas to really argue and and it had some impact on the toes. yeah um so i'm not really sure what the result is going to be but um we certainly are going to keep an eye on making sure that um 20th century infrastructure like a pipeline isn't forced on our communities again so we have to find alternative ways yeah. to, to to we, that amount of <coughs> yeah, I mean, it clear it that clearly that is for more than just us as a community. I, I says I think that there is an alternative plan in the works, so and we, we're going to we'll benefit from that. Great. Well, I want to thank the donor. So it was clear that there was no taxpayer money done. That yeah, used. that was in the paper. It was. It sounded like the town had spent money on it. No, I wanted to clarify that right. and and thank. Make sure it was clear that we were very thankful. Mm -hmm. And it did have some impact. Um, anyway, and then one last thing, my big thing on ticks. Even Kip, though, is saying that there is less. You're going to be proud of me. I went and bought two. Oh, well, they're on sale. Oh, now. They're on sale for five forty nine. They're not even I'm six forty nine. rebate. Yeah. I'm for my mom. Okay. Well, I'm, I'm serious. No, no, even Kip that. will admit that. <laughs> There's less. There, you you don't pick ticks off the horses if you are consistently yeah. spraying. I, I ha had some people call. This is really interesting because I think people do listen. Um, but I had some people call that said that you know, well, why don't you just you know buy the clothes? That first off, you know, you have to sp you pen spend a lot of money for the clothes, but then that have it in it. Yeah, and oh. then and then I'm I'm just thinking. So you're wearing it against your skin. Yeah. And then if you sweat a lot, you probably want to wash it on a regular basis. So how long does it last? Yeah. This is so much cheaper. Five forty nine. Right. Spray your pants and your shoes, and if yeah. someone can spray the top of your shirt or whatever. But it goes on the clothes, and and the only negative thing that you need to worry yeah. about is just not on cats. And other than that, well, it's you just really. Spray your dog's legs either. Why? Because they lick them. Well, if you wash your dog's legs down or wipe your dog's legs, it would be okay. Uh, I, I'm not an expert, but I, both of my yellow laps, when I watch them, they sit down there always licking oh, their paws. Oh, they're always licking their, oh, yeah. Yeah, mm. yeah I guess if, if you're not going to monitor. I, my daughter does her dog. She's a Rhodesian Ridgeback. She doesn't really lick her legs. But well, we do their, their back, their belly, yeah. and stuff like that. We just don't do their front paws. And you're still collecting a ton off them? I heard there no, was a bad... No, it's, it's, oh, been, been it's really been, if for me anyways, my yeah. experience, it's gone down quite a bit. Great. See, so honestly, hmm? this was a deal, right? Maybe, yeah. Yeah, you're listening. <laughs> okay. Always the skeptic. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I've, I've used that stuff for years anyways. Uh, but okay. Not no. on dogs, just on the horses. But. Well, 
I, I uh, w Victoria doesn't pick dog, uh, ticks off the, her dog, but she also gives her dog baths on a regular basis because she shows them. So, but anyway. All right. Next. Uh, did you? Yes. Really, do you want me to talk about um, uh, under three? I oh, three oh yes. Time. I'm sorry. We yeah. skipped that. I'm That's sorry. Okay. I apologize. I might have been when I was out of the room. No, 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 up. no. Um, I was going to have Dick make a comment if he was necessary, but go ahead. Okay. Well, um, I asked um, uh, Charlie Konecki, who's been our um, assistant health agent, who's been working with the 72 Mill Village Road property for an update, and um, said, very pleased to advise you all work has been completed except the removal of buried concrete and pavement. There's a new septic system. The collapsing shed has been removed. Business operation is closed and equipment re removed. The waste oil and junk has been removed from the site. And he spoke to the um, occupant owner yesterday about completing the removal of the ma buried material and its beginning as soon as weather permits. And um, he has placed a screener on the property to filter the material. And he, uh, there will be an, a reinspection either on Monday or Tuesday of next week. Right. That's and he met with DEP in Springfield and went over the progress. So they're in the good. loop as well. You can have Great. Thank you very much, Wendy. That's okay. a good news. And another item that I had is, and we talked about this earlier, um, the Franklin County Planning Board has two reps. Did you mm -hmm. talk about this already? I'm no, sorry. No, no, okay, we didn't. Okay, because we, I completely we talked forgot. in and out of the meeting. Um, and... Um, you're the rep from the planning board. No, John Bronis is. Oh, then that needs to be corrected. But there's also a rep that the select board either sends one of their own or we uh, you delegate that. And John Pachorek Senior has been doing that. I get, no, he was the other. He was the other general rep, or was he on the planning board? Um, I uh, I think he 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 was our FERCOG council rep. Yeah. Yes. But okay, so this is to the regional planning board which we have a planning board rep and a select board rep on that. So I know, um, John. You, you uh, can ask, you can. I have gone to some of the meetings there. and John, so John Baronis is showing up for the planning board one. Okay. Um, they, ha they had Kip's name in the thing yeah, I got I today. So. Unless, w were you doing it as a select board? No. Or have you gone? No, I've never been. Oh. I, I used to be on it 30 years ago. <laughs> um, I was a, the planning board rep for many years, and then I went a few times as a select board rep and then convinced John Pichort to senior to go. Mm -hmm. um, so we haven't had so anybody. So you're needing who? How many people do you need on Just one f that you Just either, one. it's either, uh, well, you delegate it <clears throat> to somebody or yourself. I, since I haven't been there, I, I can't really speak to it, but John... Baronis uh, reports the planning board, mm -hmm. and it appears to me that things move quite slowly there. Mm -hmm. There doesn't seem like there's much going on. I don't, I, I don't know. Well, they but, talk about regional issues, so it's not um, obviously when the pipeline was coming through that took a sure. huge chunk. But uh, when they were capping landfills, that was an issue. Uh, I, that was when I was there, um, um, and there was. I remember this vividly there was talk of everybody all the towns were having to close their landfills mm -hmm. and uh, we were looking for solutions and we were actually looking at a regional bio, kind of a biomass facility mm -hmm. at the old it was at Strathmore the other paper company and all the towns were supportive of it of course other than Montague where <laughs> everyone would ship their trash right. um, and it would and also it. create a, a fuel for the paper company but Montague voted it down so that was kind of an important vote in that. But that's what we were working on 35 years ago. So uh, a lot of energy issues yeah, back then. Wow. Mm. Yeah, it was a lot. It really was a long time ago. Yes, it was ago. a very long time ago. That was one of my first things. It's just oh, yeah. Yeah. oh, that was in the middle of my years. work. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> anyway, so are you saying you might be interested in? No. no. I don't. I'm sorry. <laughs> well, let's put it on hold. Let, yeah. we, don't, we don't have a lot okay. of time tonight left um I oh want, yes and now you now's the big topic and we want and this is the thing that we wanted to focus in on um so kip you, you're fine um with the wesson and sampson thing right now the way we left it going to be sorted out or do you want to make a more comment because that was really on the agenda down yeah. here um 
I, mean, I, I didn't mean to come across this. No, I, 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 I guess how we're going to deal with I can appreciate your, your position. I just feel that, you know, using their own words in there, I, I don't see, unless they change their mind, how we can resolve it. The, they're either going to change their mind or we're going to pay it. I well, have, I have a bigger, a broader issue on that. What are we going to do with Captain Lathrop? The I pump mean, station? Yeah. We have problems there constantly, <clears throat> we, and we're spending tons of money. And things, things have gotten under control a little bit. Uh, Kevin still s sends somebody there, but the more I learn about it, um, because of it being a pump station by DEP regulations, it has to be looked at twice a week, regardless of what they do. Right. It has to be inspected. So, so, but that being said, uh, we have a line. When you say who, who does it have to be a town. licensed person or anybody can go? I mean, who does Kevin it, send? It, I don't know. It just okay. needs to be inspected. That's all I know. Okay. And somebody has to inspect it. So it has to be inspected. It has to be inspected. The infrastructure in there is really old, right? Well, the, the only issue that we have, which is the big one, <clears throat> is those pumps get plugged by the wipes. Right. And, you know, there are times where they've burned out the pumps. Uh, there is a backup pump in place, but you know, depending on when it happens, it causes a problem. You know, either the, the DPW has to go out there in the middle of the night or on the weekend, or or worse, when it's cold. Sure. Um, we do have a line of uh, macerator pumps uh, that will grind all of this, and it will not clog these pumps, and it will send the problem down to the sewer plant. Um, that I believe is going to alleviate the problem there. Um, it's probably will need some new electronics, mm -hmm. uh, but it's a much simpler setup, not as complicated, I guess, is what's, what's there. there um, <clears throat> I've been uh, in communications with um, these people from the Springfield Water and Sewer, and uh, they've provided me with some contractors' names. Uh, I've also been in contact with two different vendors, getting prices on them. And uh, when I get that all together, which I hopefully will be by the end of the month, um, get Kevin involved and say, look, this is what I've got. Um, you know, these people want to be Then you guys will have you. a recommendation. Yeah. Yep. Okay. And what is the, um, how is the sewer study committee feel? Have they been addressing that at all? Well, no, that was, be, because I, we, I, I, what I just said to you, I, I said to them, and, you know, they they felt comfortable with that. Uh, it, it doesn't s seem to make a lot of sense to rebuild something that doesn't really need to be fixed. It's just the pumps have always the been a, the issue. They've been the an issue, yep, the in the stuff that goes in. In our, in our well, um, advertising to the town, the, the houses, is it that does, any difference? I don't know. I, I'm going to say no because right. Kevin says the, the basket there keeps getting plugged. Well, one of the things is with these new pumps, that basket can then be removed and everything can go in there. And this is going this to will just it'll grind it up. up. It'll grind it up. Um, and then we need to deal with it when it gets down. At the right. That's the that's another that's gotcha. another issue. Um, as far as <clears throat> the sewage treatment plant, um, I, I think at our last meeting we we kind of came we ran up against a wall. Um, there was discussion that uh, the majority. Can I just interrupt you one second? Do we all agree that? One of our top priorities is we have to sort out the sewer stuff. Uh, oh, yes. Yeah. Okay. That so that we that's our that. number right. one, one, number one. That was my number one sewer is to find out what we were doing with the sewer. So sub of that, 1A, is Captain Lathrop. Mm -hmm. And, okay, so what we need from you, Kip, is to continue on as sort of like, okay, what – what is the timeline and what is when is a recommendation coming or what what direction do you want Trevor and I to oh. be in support of you and what you you're doing with the um, sewer committee right okay, I mean because well, we're I don't want to hear from the sewer committee yeah. what's going on right well okay, this so what I, I want to explain to you what's okay. happened is that you know over the last almost year you know, we've, we've had a lot of good discussions and, and some of the board members have become very frustrated because they feel that we're just spinning our wheels. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> but we've, we've really eliminated a lot of options and, and, and had good dialogue about what would be in the best interest of the, the community and, and cost effective. But at our last meeting uh, is where a lot of the information that I had been digging for and digging for and Bruce Hunter really exposed a lot of it and then once again one of the damning letters from Weston and Samson 
exposed a lot of this stuff. So what basically came out of it is the group says, as a group, we're not knowledgeable enough to know what needs to get done. So they wanted to hire an engineering firm to study this. And I said, wait. I says, this is what we paid Weston and Samson to do. They looked at both of the plants. They came up with these ideas about pumping sewage from old Deerfield lift stations. They did all this. Yeah. You know, now it's up, we've got to decipher that. They felt that we they didn't have the expertise to do this, that we were just spinning our wheels, and they wanted to basically hire somebody else to do this. And so that's kind of where we left it. Um, so one did of the, they take a vote to? Well, they, they, they took a vote to uh, recommend that the sewer commissioners hire somebody to do this. Um, to evaluate. To evaluate. Right, but we already paid a lot of money, and, and that's what I've been kind of knee-deep in, trying to get this sorted out. So before um, you hire another engineering firm, you want to get solid information from Weston and Sampson whether correct. they're going to be able to help us still. Exactly. Okay. But to me, and this is where it, get, it got very frustrated, one of our board members actually resigned over it, is that, you know, sitting here, I, I w there's two issues. One is that some of the board wanted to follow our charge, if you will. Mm -hmm. And I kept, what do, you, what do you mean this charge? What do you mean? And only within the last few weeks did I stumble across what our charge was. And it was something that Doug had created. And it wasn't just, it wasn't just the sewer plants. It was uh, rainwater, drainage, and it was very, very broad, you know? And I said, wait, wait, wait. So I, I want to, I, I said, let's rein this back in, because what we have is an immediate problem with the South Deerfield right. plant. And that's what I want to focus on and get that straightened out. And, and then we can go back and address it. But the board as a whole voted to, you know, hire somebody to do this. So, so our immediate issue is the plant and all the stuff that's coming in at the headworks. The headworks, right. right. And then are they concerned that we're spending money on that problem when we haven't accounted for what we're going to do up here yet? By up here, you mean as an old deer? As an old deer field. Are we going to take that stuff and whatever we do, my concern is whatever we do with it, like you're thinking ahead of this curve or whatever we're going to do with that plant, will that Headworks project be able to take whatever we bring from old deer field? If, if right. for some reason we decide to take old deer field and ship it to south deer field, Will the headworks program that we're going to try and fix, right. will that be able to take it? There's, huh. well, I, I'll answer your question, and it's probably. And the reason right. I say it is if we build it large enough, it could. But the cost of getting the, the sewage from Old Deerfield up here is astronomical. It's $20 million. Okay. So it doesn't seem feasible to do that. That's why I, we went into this whole different management area what we can do is improve the South Deerfield plant and then we can do the same thing to the old Deerfield plant. There's been a lot of discussion back and forth as to what improvements we really need to do here. And that's why a lot of things have come to light as to, you know, what was what needed to get done and what was a wish list. Right. And of course that terminology depends on who you're talking to, you know. Um, and I I uh, we we just recently got some help uh, from Josh Schlemel, who's a Deerfield resident, but he's also the executive director of Springfield Water and Sewer. Okay. And he's compiled a list of subcontractors that they work with okay. so that I can get uh, a better idea of what What's our plant need needs yeah. to, to fix the problems that we have without rebuilding the whole thing. And, you know, there are long-term issues and there's short-term issues. And the short-term issues are nowhere near as expensive as the long-term issues. And I don't think that we have to address all of them because it isn't something that, you know, we're going to have to deal with this year or next year. Down the road, yes, five or ten years, there are changes coming that we're going to have to deal with. But You're talking about regulatory changes or changes within the regulator, plant? Regulatory okay. changes. Yeah. You know, all right. um, so we, if we fix the immediate problems, that will lessen the burden on our plant and make it more efficient anyways. And we're not going to be spending tons of money. And it's something that can be done 
I'm going to say reasonably feasible because it, it could be done for under a million dollars. And I think we could take the same process and do that in Old Deerfield. The, the big issue that the, the uh, sewer study committee had with Old Deerfield is because it's in a floodplain. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I don't really know how long it's been there, but it's been there for a while. Same. 70s. And, and okay, and we've been through some pretty bad floods over there, and it survived. So, you know, here again, you, you got a couple inches. Yeah, I know, but I. I, I so you know, there's, there's, we don't have any definite still, answers, but we're getting closer. Even though I like the idea of the management areas, and and the idea of the management areas is to separate the two plants, so you're not having to. You can do costs associated with each, right. and then. That's good. Somebody can look at up there and say, "Is it more cost effective? Just connect to Greenfield." But well, will they and then, take it? then I don't to think Greenfield has the facility to take. They it. they would be building. interested if if they could get a Mass Works grant and upgrade because they have to do upgrades as well. And if but, they if they upgraded so they could take ours, that would give them an uh, like a chip. Right. To, has that conversation ever happened? Uh, I, when I wrote the HUD, when I we went, um, we got the okay to go through the HUD process, and I wrote, wrote the grant to um, connect. Oh right, that didn't get funded, but it was a really good. It was project. it was it got funded. Oh, it did. But then politically, all the money, all the money yeah. went to Springfield, yeah. because I was totally appalled mm -hmm. that we had these huge like multi million dollar repairs, and so I thought, well, the way to do do that is you know apply a HUD grant and it has to be low income so you'd incorporate the fixes to Greenfield and hook up Old Deerfield and then incorporate shut down um, Sunderland and incorporate Sunderland into so us. So Greenfield was on board? Yes Mayor Martin was very interested because he's a, he's got a multi-million dollars for repairs too and, and so I put in I put in the grant for 20 million and I um, and, and that's you got a twenty million dollar grant, and it <laughs> went down to Springfield. So, and, and how long ago was that? Um, it was around last year, sometime. Oh, do, do we have do we have that in the office? No, no, no. We we did it through um, EEOA, and I mean we had public hearings. We did this through the conservation district, okay. And our creating resilient communities group, we had public hearings. Mm -hmm. We got the initial uh, hoop to go. Um, we got the money for. The Shelburne and Buckland Wells that are in Colerain, and um, so that got us eligible. This is money left over from Sandy, mm -hmm. um, okay. and then um, the Sandy losses. You know, you get their five percent. So we became eligible for the pool, and and so the money for Buckland Shelburne, everything went down to Springfield. So anyway, well, we got the money for Buckland Shelburne. Just just a little while ago, so that's their wells are taken care of. But it, it was a lot of work. We had public hearings, we had workshops, we had drag people out of the hills to come, and and then we mm. the money politically went to Springfield. So, so anyway, anyways, that's why it was spazzy. It over, I, I would, I'm really hoping that in the next few weeks I'll be able to connect these contractors and these vendors and come up with um, a plan to present to not only the sewer study committee but to us as to what we can do at the South Deerfield plant you know now you know not a year and a half or two years and I, I just, just there was so much money and put involved so it's really really sure whatever we do to that plant it can it can take upgrades, you know what I mean? We, right. I don't want to just spend a million dollars there and realize, ah, uh, right. oh, yeah. we should yeah. have done I'm, a I'm, I'm two million dollars or something. I, I just, I just, I, I'm I just all over that so chart. I'm not doing there's so much money. money. I, hear, I hear this term a lot that, you know, I don't want to put a Band-Aid on it. I, that's not what I want to do, and that's right. not. I want to fix the problem that we have. Mm -hmm. Understand that, you know, there could be a, a, uh, an increase in the flow through future development, but I, I'm a realist. I know that there's just not a lot of places around here that you're going to get Correct. development. Now, right. I know that to a lot of folks, this condo project, the 72 units or whatever they are, is, is a big thing. That's going to be nothing in, in our right. sewer plant. You know, I mean, it's going to be less than one half of a percent. Right. So, 
it's not a you big know, deal. It, it's not a big thing. So I, that's what I want. I want to create so we can get rid of these problems. Yes, w we do have two aerator tanks that could possibly work simultaneously, but there's a problem with all the grit and stuff like that. There's, so we, need, uh, we need clarifiers. We need, we need another clarifier. Because it's true, if that fails, you know, we're in, we're in trouble. trouble. But but you know what? Every town around has the same issue. I know. You know, it's, it's but I, wanna, I definitely yeah. want to fix that. And I'd like, I'd like to learn more about different ways instead of aerating to use a different system. There's, there's, there's a lot of things. But, you know, I'm not qualified to exactly. do that. And that's why we, we I'm to. reaching out to these, these other firms. But what Josh is going to, these other firms that I'm, uh, Josh is going to, introduce me to are they're much smaller firms you know they're I, I'm not gonna say they're just mom and pops but you know they might only have three or four people but they're smaller local people that can give us more of the personal attention and we're not just going to be uh, another notch in their belt if you will you know and you know I, I don't know I haven't met with all these people so, yeah but um, so that's good okay can I ask the question of clarification sure. listen to what you were saying it sounded like the committee voted and I, I was sent the minutes mm -hmm. and I read them quickly. I would have mm -hmm. to go back to really read them. But were they? Did they actually vote? Because I thought Bruce actually also separately asked me to start writing an RFP to seek what you were talking about at right. the beginning, like to actually right. seek another engineering firm or a for engineering firm. Well, you know, and, and I here again, you'll have to excuse me my ignorance because I'm not sure how this works. But you're right. That board did take a vote to recommend to us to, you know, go search for another firm. I don't want to do that right now. And the reason I don't want to do that is because I think that Weston Sampson did a lot of that work. We just need somebody who can re refine, it refine what they've done, even though we're not going to be able to use any of it. And I want somebody else to come in and look at our plants that we've ha I've had three different engineers, and each engineer that's looked at that has been in the industry for over 30 years apiece, and all three of those engineers told me independently what they thought it needed, and it was 80% different direction of what the Weston Samson people said. But were they aligned with each other? No, they didn't, none of them knew each other. No, but I meant what I meant was their, what they saw as needed aligned yeah, exactly. Okay. And and the thing about that I that I really took a lot of uh, stock in is that none of these people w was asked to give a price. You know, none of them. And they weren't. They are not going to do the work. I just brought them in. You've been doing this for thirty years. These are the problems. What do you think is the best solution? And all three of them came in with the same ideas, and it was totally different from Weston Sampson. And so now I'm bringing in yet other people to come up with the same thing, but yet then I'll have to speak to Wendy or however to create an RFP or speak whatever. To however, I'm off but, <laughs> but, but one of the things that Josh educated me to is like, if you ask these people to come in and give you an idea and have them write a report, which is gonna be free, that will have all the information, and they're basically writing the RFP, so I can give all the information to, to Wendy, and she can just say, well, this is what we need, this is what we need, this is what we need, and then we can put it out to bid. And have a company come in. Have a company would, come in. Why would they do it for free? Well, they're just giving us their observations, mm -hmm. you know, and as long as they're just giving our observations, you know, they, they're not going to design the thing, but they're going to write a list of all the things that need to be addressed, and those are all, that's the information that you're going to need in a, in a more uh, fine-tuned RFP. Because if you just put an RFP for engineering services. Oh, uh, no, you can't do that. You, you, know, you would right. definitely, and this is what's so frustrating the about this other work. work, is that detailed scope of work. Mm -hmm. Right. And, and often what happens, you do get an engineering company that does it, uh, give you, you know, gives you that kind of um, free. Sure. Um, like there's another term that's escaping me now. but um, And then they have an opportunity to, to bid on it at right. a later date or whatever, however you choose to go with it. But, um, yeah, I, I'm sure, well, we'll have to see. But even with so, my Okay, so they're recommending one thing, but you're the deciding board, and it's your, opi it's your opinion, your recommendation is not to go with their recommendation. Well, I, I'd like to wait until I can assemble these other okay. people. And, and you'll bring so it back to them? Right. Or it's not that you don't want to take that recommendation, you just want a little more time. 
Right, and, and because now that I have Josh's help, he is willing to review this stuff, mm -hmm. and then he can weed out and and because he does a lot of these RFPs and stuff like that, mm -hmm. you know, and he will assist us and to put this together. So when we hand it out to the, the same people that kind of gives our ideas, we'll have a detailed list of what we're we going exactly to get. What we're and then when for. we get a bid on it, then we'll, we'll know. So so um, what what did you have a, um, in mind as a timeline? Not that I'm trying to pin you down too much, but this Before, is our number one priority, so. Yeah, I'm, I'm looking to have, I don't know if I can have uh, definite costs, but I want to meet with these people and you know, bring all the information before um, I would say our August meeting. Okay. Uh, I, when I say August meeting, I mean for the sewer study committee. So right. Us, yeah. Our, you know, I can bring information back to us. Okay. Um, and the only thing I, I just wanted you to be aware of from a um, timeline point of view is if it's a capital expenditure, it's yeah. December first deadline. September. December. Or December. Oh yeah, yeah, no, it'll be long before. But see, okay. the recommendation from the sewer study committee to the select board was to hire a firm to come in and survey all of the stuff. And then all we're going to do is be right back to what we got, you know. And that's why I was opposed to it. I'm not saying that somebody couldn't enlighten us, but that's why I wanted to get these other people in here to look at our plant right so you here. You can compare when you so, get the RFPL. Yeah, and then we can deal with the situation at hand and, and kind of put that away instead. I don't want to be another year, you know, and having all the issues that we got at that sewage treatment plant. You know? So um, if we give it, say, a September. Oh, yeah, uh, I think I'll do it one mm -hmm. before that. So, okay. So let's say September, and this is our number one priority. I think one of the, one of the problems that I've been running into recently is everybody's on vacation. You know, yeah. well, he's going to be gone next week, and then this guy comes back. Well, I can't ask him because he's gone for two weeks, and I was like, oh, Jesus. Okay, yeah, I know. I've yeah, time with the family. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, okay. So I, I think I have a handle on where you feel we should be. And all right, so you're all set mm -hmm. on that, too? Yep. I had, I'm not, it's not that I'm not taking you into consideration, but uh, my second um, priority was uh, the church mm -hmm. and getting the seniors into the church. Yep. Yep. So um, we, we have to figure out how we're going to do this. And um, Dick has a couple good architects and in, in potentially in Amherst that we need to touch base with and uh -huh. um, try to have a relationship. Because you need somebody to handhold us through yeah. a, a process. And yeah. if we can budget a small amount of money to have them come in and help. I, I hate to say feasibility study because I, that just yep. gives mm -hmm. bad connotations to everybody, but as a study. Sure. But I think we have to have some overview. Well, or a plan of what we're well, tackle. What a what plan. We want it to be at the end. Right, and, and use. I mean, we need someone to, to just space use and stuff like that. So um, to work with the stakeholders and, you know, so all the... Do we know when we're going to take possession? Yeah. I within 30 days, we're I think. think we're hope. The, they're supposed to. Once you took that vote at your mm -hmm. last meeting, that went to the attorneys, who then turned it over to the attorney general's office. And, they have and to. then they're supposed to respond in 30 days. What I took from what I heard from what I heard from Jack Cooper that night was that he was assuming that no action meant approval kind of like what we have on attorney right. general but you know we just want to be clear about that so yep. um whatever it's two weeks later wow it's been two weeks since that meeting yeah um, so so we're looking sometime in august potentially yes okay. yeah but, well okay but you know we've been talking about we knew this was going to come and yep. so um uh you know we should be gearing up now or right then. so um i guess the, uh, then if 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 you all have consensus that the church is the number two thing mm -hmm. um then i would um reach out and start and unless you wanted to do it but i i was i just think we should make but inquiries sure for the architect mm -hmm. architect or I think somebody we should have a couple of different options for architects to choose from yeah i just think you know they'll come and give you a, a quick 
you know, well, I think it's important. I want to interview a couple of. I, I was just going to gonna say somebody because somebody knows somebody, and I just really want to be able to see what their. I want someone that we're going to have a re, re, good relationship. Good relationship with, and see what their. And that they would handhold us through this whole process. Mm -hmm. Okay. Should go Some through there. Prior. I just want to let you know. I think I told you all well, maybe separately that um, Alan Sweetland and. Uh, it was friends with uh, Bruce Coldham, the architect, who's now retired, and we did a walkthrough and of actually the old building, and then he was very curious to see the church, the old building, grammar school, and um, uh, he had a lot of interesting ideas. Um, he actually thought we could do housing, some housing units, and everyone's just dismissed this out of hand, but he thought there could be some housing units actually in the church area, the sanctuary area of the building. Um, mm -hmm. I know everybody. <laughs> uh, I think we're going to use. But he's, yeah, I, yeah, he's an I think we're going to use. Right. Yeah, but that's. I, you, you could, but it would be an extremely Small. expensive. Yeah, we right. need, and we and need we need the space. space too. Right. So. Um, well, I, I also um, I mentioned that to uh, Bruce um, Hunter, who who whose response I said, "What if, you know?" I told him a little bit about that and the walkthrough and he's. He said, and you've got to do, to really get the investment you need, you need for someone to get the investment to make it a, a worth their, the developers uh, to do the housing piece, they need to do at least, I thought he said 22 to 40 units or more than that. I said, well, how many are they doing in, in um, Sunderland? And I thought, you know, if you're listening, you can correct me. Uh, even if you're not listening, you can correct me. But at any rate, um, I thought he said it was somewhere near 40 units, so... Um, I think, I, think I, I, large, I, I didn't think, think it was so that large, large either. Maybe it is. But maybe maybe it's it 32. I don't know. I don't know but, For some um, reason, number 32 sticks in my mind. But okay. maybe. So still, that seems like a large number. Oh, that is a know. large number of subsidized senior housing mm -hmm. for our area. Don't we think? I think you were talking about bringing... Um, Lily, well, we Lily have a, Dwight, or? Lily, a Lily Lily Dwight, Dwight has, been part of oh, yeah, and, and we have, I mean, years ago then we did this thing, and that's certainly people yeah, of age. Yeah, I stumbled age. across it. I had no we idea had that you had done at least, this. we had well over 30. So are you, are you working on a priorities list? Yes, yes, yes. So okay. the church was second, and I then, think that but the so the architect, <laughs> what I was looking at, we are looking at August, um, I, I was hoping that someone, would, would you guys then want to, Look, reach out to architects then. Sure. Okay. Would you? Okay. Yeah. Well, let's let's have a choice. Okay. Right. I know Dick has a couple um, list. But and can then I, if can you I ask a question? Are you just looking at re redesign, or are you also looking at the structural issues and the the both. Ish, the both. building? Both. Okay. Yeah. Both. Both. You, 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 We're back to what I suggested. Yes. Yes. <laughs> okay. But we we've, we've got to sort this out because you know we. I, we I can. Give you get it good, yeah, get started. Um, then I had third was then to address um, what the reuse of um, or the housing need for um, the old senior center. But this is this is getting down. I mean that that timeline was after we mm -hmm. completed the church. So yeah. I was looking right. at this as not not this year's not this year's would be another year away. Right. Can I and then my fourth. Oh. Um, Priority was the streetscape, complete streets, mm -hmm. sidewalks, and all right. that kind of stuff. But obviously, we could start that because we've started the, the we've mm -hmm. jumped the hoops, so we could somehow figure that out. But that, as far as energy-wise, I was that was fourth on my list. And so, what I wanted to do was to see what you guys had as your priorities, and um, very similar. I you know th this kind of moves up for me. The the streetscape downtown business development planner um economic development and that's where your planner thing we don't have any tax base and and uh, and nobody is going to come to be here if these streets you know if it looks like like it does i want it to look nice i go to communities all over western massachusetts and they're constantly getting nice sidewalks i mean i don't they don't have to be brick <laughs> I've seen stamped concrete that looks good. I mean, we just need, I don't, I really just don't want asphalt for 50 yards from one side of the road to the other, and that's our sidewalk, our street, and our, I want some nice, I want a nice looking town that we can be proud of, and we should tie in sister-wise with Old Deerfield. We're not going to be Old Deerfield. We can't be. That is historic Deerfield. 
You're never going to be that. But you can also tag on to that. And you can have a look and a general feel of, of downtown um, that people are welcome and want to come to and want to walk through and shop at and dinners to go to. And, and, um, and we want to hear from the business owners and what, what they think they would need to kind of grow their businesses or what We've, other people would want to, how they'd want to bring investment to our area. I agree 100%. And we've had gone through, jumping through the beginning hoops so that we are eligible for funding now. And um, now that we're going to get fully staffed, instead of right. treading water, yep. and we got Wendy, we're counting on you. To yeah, put, well, we've got this together. initial DLTA thing. We're exactly. going to start there. We'll and then start the, there and we'll grow in order to there. get back into the Complete Streets program and in that pipeline, I have to go through this training. Mm -hmm. And it can't be, to, it's not till August 8th. So. Right, right. So we've got time. But, but yeah, just, just so things are happening. But you yep. can see that that's our priority. And, uh, and that's when I had gotten that email from that um oh right the conway, the, the school. conway school who already you know i have to remind her that you know a student a, did some work on the exactly. comments project so we need yep. to link and, you know it it, it I, I, I i i was gonna let you handle it i i listened to what you were saying in you trevor and it's i agree with you but it goes a little bit deeper and, and as a community we're gonna have to make some changes and i'll, I'll give you an idea I, an example um this place I go to in Rhode Island, I just saw um, a small development go in. And uh, so I started poking around. And it's it's in Warwick, Rhode Island, which is kind of a big, sprawling city. Yeah. But this little, it's right near the ocean and stuff like that. And um, they put up a dozen housing units. And there's three units in each building. The buildings are eight feet apart. And... They're all crammed together, and there isn't a square inch of that that doesn't have a flower, a bush, or sod on. It's beautiful. Yeah. But the mentality here is you see all these people crammed. Oh, who wants that? You know, and stuff like that. You go to where there was a, there was an old rundown. I think it was a garage. They demolished that, and there's like a little. I don't even want to call it a strip mall because it isn't. Because there's no parking in front. There's parking out back. It's a building that's about 200 feet long, and 10 or 12 feet of it looks like a castle. Then there's a part that looks like an old cobbler shop. Then it ones look like a colonial house. And about every 40 feet, there was a different storefront, but the building was front backwards. It had nice concrete sidewalks, mm -hmm. little shrubs, not big trees that are gonna hide everything right. like that. Right. And this whole area, these people are not tax exempt but they get a discount on their taxes oh, all tip. the way through, yeah, yeah. you know? And, the, the whole, and it's only been there for a, a very short time, and when I say short time, since the springtime. And I go into this one place, and so we, we go there for coffee and ask the guy how it's doing, and he says, oh, it's been doing really good. He says, our only issue is that we're trying to get the city to allow us to have more parking in the back, mm -hmm. you know? But, yeah. you know, and, and so I... We need I, to be Friendly. Yeah, we, friendly, you need to be outside the box. Yeah. And, you, and one of the things is like, there's a, a fellow has a, a fly shop in uh, mm -hmm. the, right the building down there. He's done well. He's done well. Very but well. you know how much it would help him if there was a sign at the end of Route 5 and exactly. 10 coming in? But we don't allow off premises signs. No, no, you know? I, I, and that's no, the kind it, of stuff you know, that I think we need and to that's, change. That's yeah, but you that's need to change. A we could do a directory sign. And we could, but those are where that, it I, becomes I, government's place. To help to these people, absolutely. I'm not absolutely. saying that the town 100%. needs to spend a lot of money to promote these businesses, but that's the direction that we can help them. Mm -hmm. We can help them by putting a little sign in here and little, you know, things like Isn't that. Isn't there a big sign in the field uh, by the Tri Town Beach? There is. He's got a big sign there. He does. I see it when I come up. He does. Yeah. You know, but that's for people who well, that's know where they're. But where that's Waitley also. Yes, it yes. is. But. You yes. know, those are the types of things yes. that we can do. I'm with you, know. you on that. 100%. Thank you, Waitley. I'm sorry. No, but <laughs> whatever we can do. No, I'm 100% I'm with that. And uh, because somebody like that is huge. Look at those bylaws. Huge, Look at that unique stuff that to our that's town. That's the kind Drive of next step yeah. DLTA project we would do with, yes. with this. Yes. Um, I'm really and excited. And what you're talking about, about I think, is, is what's called, you know, the new urbanism, the infill design, yeah. where you have parking out back and more densely. Yep. 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 What you jobs. what you do by that is you you create a, a sidewalk shopping experience like downtown right. Northampton, yep. you know, and it's uh, 
I agree 100%. And there's, and and there's no out, seats for because Danish it, and coffee. What, what, and happens, what happens with this is it doesn't happen overnight, but you end up, you got to have more than one or two businesses. You got to yeah, have people. You got to have a reason for people to come there. It has to be yeah. a destination. You know. So if you if you have a place where people can do a little shopping and get something to eat and have a little, yeah. you know, boutique, they, they can't be expensive because these people right. can't start these businesses if it's expensive. Exactly. So it has to be cheap. But once you start getting all these people here, then the people start making more money. That's when you can get more revenue. Exactly. From. But if you don't work it, if you don't help them in the beginning. Yeah. It's just going to, you're going to have a turnover of exactly. businesses, one after the other. And we have, we do have a lot of traffic that comes through our town. I mean, 91 is just an artery of people spending money going from Connecticut, New yeah. York, all the way up through to sure. Vermont. And, and, and we're a stopping point for that. We have Yankee Candle and Old Deerfield, and we've got to build on. It's a good on, stopping point. Yeah, we've got people to build lose. on that. We got. I mean, it's not going away. People are always going up nine one. The thing is, if you think, if you really kind of sit back and think about it, when the developer was talking about the condominiums on the end of Sugarloaf Street, one of the big concerns with a lot of the residents is the traffic, and a lot of the traffic that comes down Sugarloaf Street is just a crossover. Mm -hmm. Now, if you develop enough of the downtown area where you create, in a sense, a little bit of a bottleneck, the traffic's not going to go through the center. They're going to go around the way it was designed yeah, I mean. when they built that. Yeah. And they're going to stay away from the downtown area because it's too congested for them to get through. Do you but know what I'm saying? the people that want to come mm -hmm. will come. And the people who want to come, the people who live car. there will come there. But just the people want to zip through because they want to beat the traffic lights. They're not yeah. going to go that way. Right. And that's the faster traffic anyway. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so do we want to get back to how does your planner fit into? I was just thinking that. Um, yeah. well, That's exactly what I was saying. I was thinking it might be interesting to have someone like Debbie Dacia. Yeah, Dacious. I was thinking if no, we could get someone gracious, retired. Dacia. Dacia. That's how I'm supposed to remember. Um, who has done, did that job for 30 years, lives here in our community. You would have pointed her on, on my recommendation to the um, project to look at where we, how we mm -hmm. take tackle this church issue um, and have her come in and if she would and just talk about what this job would be. I would love What that. she did love as that. a planner economic development for Agawam for 30 years. That'd be great. It, I, I would love to listen to that but what I would what I was thinking about is I would really love to see someone in town hall that if somebody comes in and says you know I'm thinking about opening a restaurant what do I got to do? That's what they do. And then, yeah. and then they what say, an economic what is it? Where is it you want to go? What is it? Right. And then these are steps. You know, you have to go, you know, you have to go to the, you know, the, the planning board, the building First. inspector. Yeah. But also, line it up. Exactly. You don't let these people, you know, just wander out there and then go right. to one committee. But it's also, we have to, as leaders, have to bring in these boards and say, in your own lane. I got you. You know, yep. you all do your job. And, if, and, it, and because of... Because of regulatory or statutory rules and regulations, it seems to me that I've learned a lot of the stuff has to end with the planning board because the planning board is one that approves this plan that gets registered and all the requirements. So if you have to go to the ZBA, you go to the ZBA first. They got to stay in their line and put whatever restrictions they're going to do. Conservation Commission, they have to stay in their line and put whatever restrictions on. And, and, and it winds up with the planning board and then to pass or not pass. I, I only want to, I'm, I'm not going to drag this out, but I just want to share with you people one more time about okay. bylaws. <laughs> okay. I want to show you this. This is yet the third $25,000 book that this town has demanded from a small business that's going to get put in that trail out there and never looked at again. Stormwater it, Management It's crazy. For, um, it's absolutely crazy. For ideal? Yeah, it's for a self storage unit. The guy's building garages. And this is $25,000. It's a total waste of money. And it, it scares a lot of people around it. I'll tell you one thing. I live in this town. I would not do that. I'd go to, I'd go to Hatfield. I'd go to Sunderland. I'd go to Hadley. I would not do that in Deerfield. And that's a shame. And that's the third one that I've seen in the last 12 months. There's got to be a happy medium between taking care of our property and understanding what we're doing and planning for the future and not wasting people's money. 
mean, we, if we demand that, we need it for a reason. And I want to make sure that we don't lose sight well, of that, but I don't want to make it. That could be something um, a, a economic development planner exactly. could we should look, at look at our zoning bylaws that. and say what's reasonable, what's yeah, what I mean, will, what will preserve I, I the, um, the quality of the you know exactly. town's culture exactly. and allow business that, to go. That piece of land has been there forever. <clears throat> the antique place that's on that property has been there for about 70 years. Because there's going to be these garages there, it's not going to change how much snow there is. It's not going to change how much water falls on the land. It's not going to change any of that. All this does is like they say to the people, what are you going to do with the water? And how are you going to deal with it on that particular location? Well, they got two choices. They can make a pond, which Carolyn hates because the mosquitoes are going to be there. It right. does or make they can no put it, sense. They can put it in subsurface drainage facilities. That's what that book's all about. But you go over there and you dig a hole a foot deep it and you got, water. you got 13 inches of water. Right. So wh how, what are you going to do, you know? And, and this is all a bunch of theories, best practice management, you, whatever label you want to put it on it, but it's not going to change anything over there. Well, I, but building ponds and making public health issues isn't either. Well, that's got a pond. Well. You know, but what, what I'm saying is, and, and just down the road where that poor guy put in that um, propane thing, same thing. But his, his book was about $45,000. You know, and it's like, what? Well, we have, we have water issues in town. And if you don't address them, Kip. I, I understand that. And I'm not saying not to address them. It's like you, you can address them because, as you know, being on the planning board, you, you always talked about water, drainage, and stuff like that. But that stormwater bylaw, I mean, that one particular bylaw is 170 pages long of just all this. Kip, I know you've been after it. It, yep. it is, it, we had, we got a grant to, to do the stormwater. We had buy-in by a large number of people and and I, I just, mean it was it was a two year process. I'm I, I understand I, I'm that. I, but not I'm just, saying I'm that just explaining something to you. It couldn't be is, fixed, but it, it's 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 a real big issue. And um, you know, we 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 came this close to losing the Cumberland Farms thing because of that. You know, they wanted it and it's it was worth it and they spent a lot of money on that too. Well, I don't know why it's so expensive, except that there are big issues on water, and you got to document that you are keeping the water on site. It is awful, if you are in a butter to this development, to have the water be shed off because of the development into your property. I mean, and that well, is a huge it, issue. It, it, and, and it is. Uh, but it, it's a complicated, it's, it's not really that complicated. This particular parcel of land, many years ago, it wasn't wet like it is now where the Volvo garage, that wasn't that wet, and where that old hotel was, wasn't that wet. But if you go behind that property line, there was an old uh, trolley tracks that went down through there. And it started right by where the dry flower place used to be where the dinosaur mm -hmm. rock is. And there was a canal that went all the way down to behind where the candlelight restaurant was. And that road went there, but there was a drainage culvert. And then it used to just go down toward um, near Melnix and then yeah. into the Deerfield River. Well, one of the first things that started happening is that the culvert got plugged up and they stopped cleaning it. I don't know who's responsible, but that was one problem. Then the town of Deerfield had a dump right by where Greg's Automotive is when they tore down a couple of houses in town as well as Braeburn's Before building. Before my the time. They, they buried everything right there and it was a stump dump. So they filled in that whole gully, you know, and that's what started creating this problem of all the water backing up. And so now, you know, 50 years later, all that property is wet, and it, it's because it's got nowhere to go. And that's what I was saying to you before. We're, no matter what you put there, the rain is still going to fall there. So by making people deal with this, you know, it's like you have a five-gallon pail and you've got 10 gallons of water. It's going somewhere. And yeah, but, but Kip... Just because what was done in the past was incorrect doesn't mean that you keep doing the incorrect things. No, you have no, no, to, no, no. you have to, if it's a wet site, 
it's it's going to be tough. I, I understand that, but it's th it's to this detail is what makes it expensive. I'm not saying not to deal with it. You know, I'm just saying as to to what level do you do you bring it to? Well, I'm not. Pr I'm yeah, don't know, have the background I, to s question whether it, yep. the engineering is an overkill or not, but. Yep. What stormwater runoff is a huge issue. Yeah, and, it is. And we are required by law, and we are not an MS4 community, thank goodness, but at some point it's going to get down to us, and if we don't have, uh, are proactive in some way, like having our stormwater bylaws, yeah. then we, we will end up paying and paying and paying like Northampton. It's a shock. Yep. Yeah. And, and why? Why would we? Well, Why wouldn't we be proactive? But these are, I, I, I brought that up n as just, it affects it, the just how it affects I know. it, you know. And, and I, I mean, I, on my parcel of land down on Route 5, uh, there's a culvert from the, under the railroad tracks, and it's 24 inches. And I think I, I might have shared with you before, uh, but when we get heavy rains, or especially in the springtime, that culvert dumps almost 2 million gallons of water a day on my land. And I only own an acre and a half over there. So what, what am I supposed to do with Where that? Where does that water come from? It comes from all of the mountain. It just happens wow. to run down through there. and comes. Wow. So it goes behind my buildings and just goes by the farm and just keeps coming down. And that's the beginning of what's blood, Bloody Brook. All that water comes through there. So now if I wanted to do something, I mean, the buildings are there. But if I had to do, it would be, what do you do with 2 million gallons a day? You know, you just... <laughs> Well, but anyhow, I, but I, I'm just saying these are the types of things that really stifle a lot of it. You so that you know that'll can, probably come up. Can't do. Yeah. You know when we do some community engagement around the downtown, and yeah. Yeah. I'm sure it will get into those well, kinds of issues, yeah. and we can take Berkeley another look at yeah. look at the well, bylaws right. or whatever. Wendy's gonna quit if we yeah, keep going. No, so Pat, <laughs> Pat's gonna die. <laughs> so she's gonna um, dance now she she's fine. That. She's fine. Do you okay. feel like um, you have enough information to well, talk I just to that to Priscilla add, person? Yeah. And, to and who? That Priscilla person at the Conway School that had called, that had emailed? Oh, yeah. I've okay. worked with them many times over the last okay. 35 years when t in towns I've worked in and they've done design work. And the main thing I would want to say is, this is great. Let's not get too fabulous. Because <laughs> they do these kind of... So, at um, any rate, I did want to say something. It was suggested when we did that tour, as I was talking about earlier. Um, that we set up a committee to look at the reuse of that, either this, um, that it, um, it could have multiple charges, but it, the committee be composed of people who want to save the building and people who want it, who are dedicated Actually, to, that was, um, to well, the senior housing aspect. And, that's and where give them the task of proving that that building can be saved, proving it. And, and there will be someone who will find the money to do it and that they can find someone to turn into housing or preserve it for another purpose. But that their task, because all I hear around here is it's not worth it. No one's, can, you know, can't be done. Well, that's blah, blah, blah. Uh, Henry, Hen committee, Henrietta Colcott had yes, expressed had interest. Yes, their task right. to come back and say either we no, it, no, just, you know, as way. much as we love that building and want to save it, we don't, we don't have a plan. Or come back and say, we found, we, here are some alternatives. Whatever, but make them prove what needs to be done. Not say we'd like this to be done. Show how it can, it can be done. Be that done. would be their task. Well, right. I, and, and I, I totally get what you're saying, but you know, I, I'm afraid of that because they did have something done, and for 1.3 million dollars, you can save it. You know, it's like, how do you no, do no, it no. affordably? We, 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 that's a, the charge will the will charge frame will it so okay. you know, and it wouldn't be no. It have to not be a cost to the town. Uh, the whole point cannot is, be a cost to the town. We have CPA money, and w that we were going to leverage the development of it, but we need to maximize the number of units. And right, so we'd have to really prescribe it. But no, no, no. We we all know towns cannot do housing development. We can't. So at the outset, they would have to um, whatever um, find the resources and really come with a, a workable plan. So do you feel like you have enough um, of a list of, or information from us on um, priority list to focus in on? Um, I mean, the, oh, the, well, the only other... The I'm only not going to be here that many years. The only other thing I would um, add to that was oh. that um, 
you know, I wasn't getting, trying to. getting a full list of um, our expenses in the town. You know, I know the capital planning committee is is starting to work on right. how much we need to spend in all different areas of this town so that our our residents can get a full grasp in front of them, figure wise, of all the really important things and priorities that are needed in this town and how much it's going to actually cost to do this stuff so that we can say, okay, here we are. We've got these seven things that must be done in the next five or ten years. Okay. And, um, and here's our priority and where we think we want to go with this and this is what it's going to cost. And so I, I, w I really want to get, you know, that, that capital improvement planning kind of tied into this in some way so, so that our residents really understand the sewer, you know, the, the senior housing, the church, and all those items combined. Uh, library that may come to town. Yeah, I was just going to mention that tomorrow's the day. Huge. It is, and okay. I'm going to go over to library at, when see, they see will get the notice about. Um, and there was on your next agenda to come talk. Okay, to. and that's a that's a big item. So um, everybody's got to have have an idea of it's not just library. It's library. It's sewer. It's it's senior center or community center. It's senior housing all these things come together and what we want and what we can afford and what you know what are the most important priorities mm -hmm. going forward do you want to do further development on the oxford lot i don't even know yes. what the plan was well yes uh, as you absolutely we want to get I rid didn't of know how much more i don't want to say get rid of do. want yeah. to sell that corner into and have that in somewhere some productive yeah. entity would you like me to invite debbie to a sure Yes, I always love to learn. After that or mm -hmm. Just to talk about. I, I think it would be good because yeah. then we. I, I think it'd be exciting to hear yes. the kind of things yes, that, that can That's be done. Where and we've been it would could. Well, and to and if we're serious about this, then decision. we need to um, put this in the budget for next the coming year. A position. Couldn't. Couldn't we hire somebody to do it part time, like five hours a day for three days a week? Yeah, but you get, need to know what you want. Have done. I mean, we still we have no line item though for it. We don't. Mm -hmm. No, no, we don't have a template. I was realizing this when I was sitting with Dick yesterday and talking with him about what he does as building commissioner. He goes above and above. That's why he I'm, is yes. supporting this because in some ways he does that. He fills a bit of that role. He, does. he does. He does. And yeah, sure he does. it's yeah. not something that you would normally have a building inspector, building no. commissioner right. do. So, um, and I would. It would be. A useful thing to do. So, but I think it would be good to have if she's willing to come in and talk about what she did, what she knows about this town, and what might be good. You know, I, I've, I've often thought, well, what is Pat Smith doing? But she's really kind of our technician. Mm -hmm. You know, she's not in a position to advise around business development or that kind right. of thing. It's really very strictly, you know, Jen confined to, to she's, technical she's assistance. She's quite busy there, anyways. So. Right. Um, there. Oh, I don't mean to. I'm I, in in her time with us. I'm right, talking right. not about additional. Oh, right. um, you know, uh, it's it's very it's very kind of strictly limited. So anyway, I have other things that you know I would like you to endorse them at least. But they're you know like the bylaw review, mm -hmm. the personnel oh, yeah. policy, yeah. and we actually re renewals, license renewals. I mean, know, we don't have. I mean, any look, not renewals, but problem with that, right? reviews what? of schedule, fee schedules. What Wendy's right. talking about? Form redoing forms. What? No, Softer. I don't think Kip heard you. Oh, just talking about a, a range of other sort of more administrative things that I'd that really need to go forward, like We've got our support the general bylaws, co completely sure. redoing oh, yeah. those oh, and yeah. personnel and. Maybe so. No, we want you to still be doing that. Okay, I'll still be doing that. We, <laughs> we were talking about. I, I just don't want to tread water anymore. We've had turmoil for so yeah. many, so we and transition for so many years now. I mean, well, it's not really. We have it's a only lot of a, um, two or three years, but talent just, in this community, and I'm hoping that yeah, it. we'll you'll yep. we want move people into to things that will attract more people to get involved and help. Yes. It's important um, that we participate yeah, locally. And, and the reason why I think it's important is because I think we're off the hook for this coming year, because I was really petrified about this coming year and, and the, how the budget would impact us, federal budget would impact us. But I think we're going to get like another year out of this. So 
of continuing. I, hope. Never know. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> but I'm talking about something else. Continuing <laughs> resolution, maybe, <laughs> for another year. But I, I think this coming year is not going to, I mean, I just can't imagine that they're going to have a budget by September. So we're going to squeeze by this year. So it's, we have a little bit of breathing room, maybe. And, and so I want to make sure. Up. It's all over. I know. And, and we have the opportunity to organize and get figure out what we're doing and increase our tax base and I be a little bit smarter on spending money. Bar, uh, Barb and Brenda and I have been working on the financial policies, and today Joe Markarian, who was working with the town on that, came in and sent him in a little different direction, but we hope to have those to bring to the Finance Committee and to the Select Board right. and finally get those in place. And, uh, you know, I'm now remembering things at the 11th hour, literally, <laughs> or my 12th hour, 13th yes, hour. Yes, I'm sorry. Um, I'm going to meet with, um, let's see, um, Satu Zoller, mm -hmm. who, uh, who uh, do you know Satu? Yep. Um, uh, she's at the, she runs the um, public administration program at UMass about student projects. She contacted me. I actually initiated, and we had this one student for this, that I talked to about doing some summer work, but this is about um, a bigger project. So we have some different resources coming Great. out of. I'll stop, because that's going to kick me, I think, <laughs> if I go on. No, but I, I if think she has the strength. But this is exciting, because I think now we can keep, we can maybe start moving ahead. And we have a little bit of breathing space, and if... Where's the breathing space? <laughs> no, that we, uh, because... <laughs> No, but I felt you an oxygen mask. <laughs> I know. Well, you I dropped down from above your desk. That would be wonderful. Okay. Well, I felt I felt that we were going to be worried, you know, as of October first, and I don't think that's going to happen. So, we're, we have no idea. Well, we, know, we can we, have any idea. we can take we care know, of We know, I know, but well. I don't feel as depressed as I was, and Just so I feel more. like we have a little bit more time, and and we're getting organized, and we're moving ahead, and, and I feel that. Good we things can, are yeah, we, that we're going to work Don't on watch stuff. The news and we're really right. I know. That really helps, too. <laughs> well, well, I have a meeting with some Russians tomorrow, so we're gonna, they're going to invest in the communities. <laughs> at, at least, at least we'll, you laid it we'll out. Take we'll at take least you, At least you put it on record. <laughs> I'm, um, I'm motion to that. adjourn? Yes. <laughs> I'll second that. All those in and favor? All, all Aye. Powell will be coming in from a, a wine and malt at some point soon because they're going to be opening mm -hmm. up.